Welcome back to episode 176 of the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast. My name is Josh. I'm here, Troy. What's going on, good buddy? Not a whole lot. It's rainy. The weather stinks here, but we were blessed with such a nice day yesterday. I guess I can't complain. Well, you know what they say, right? April showers. <laughs> there you go. Brings me fun. Bring, yeah. Nothing other than that. Uh, a lot going on. Uh, we don't have much to talk about banner today, I, I feel like. No, I don't have life? anything. Do you want to get anything off your chest? Do you want to? No, nope. baseball started. So now I'm coaching that, managing that, whatever you want to call it. It's about all I got. Mm-hmm. Life of a coach. When was the last time you weren't coaching something? You're on like a 10 year run, aren't you? Oh, <laughs> yeah. It's probably longer than that. Uh, 10. No, it's longer than that. It'd be like 12, 13, I don't know, maybe 15 years. Mm, nice. All right, well, might as well just get right into it. But before we get started, just a reminder, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a Patreon podcast. That means we rely on support of listeners like yourself to help us cover our show expenses, produce more and hopefully better hockey card content, and fund initiatives even in a small way to grow the hockey hobby. It's very easy to support us. You can do it through Patreon. You can do it for as little as $5 a month. In order to support us, uh, you can go to our website, HockeyCardsGongShow.com. Click on the Become a Patron link. You can go to the Patreon website directly, P-A-T-R-E-O-N.com, and search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. You can go to the link in our Instagram and TikTok profiles, and we also put a link to our Patreon in our show description, whether you're listening to us on a podcast app or you're listening to us uh, or watching us on YouTube, I should say. All right, man, you ready for the game plan? Should we do this? On today's show, we begin with the almost greatest player to our number 76. Then it's off to who's hot in the struggle bus. This is followed by hobby news. We then take a look at how to maximize sales profits during the NHL playoffs. Next, it's new product releases, followed by our gong show mailbag, and finally, any personal pickups. Okay, Josh, previously we looked at the greatest NHL player that wore the number that matched our episode number. We ran through all the numbers, so now we're looking at the almost greatest NHL player to wear each number from the runners up in the hockey writers greatest NHL player to wear each number article. The almost greatest player NHL player to wear number 76 per the nominees in the hockey writers greatest NHL player to wear each number article and selected by me. It's this guy right here, Josh, Chris Vandevelde. Yeah. It's kind of a meandering last name. <laughs> it's a very weird last name. Cause it's, I, I got the pronunciation. It's Van Da Veldi, which doesn't look like it. There's is that no like Dutch da. or something like that? What is must it? Must be. Must be. It sounds like one of those Dutch names with lots um, of um, con- um, <laughs> consonants and yeah. um, the V's um, and all that fun stuff. So good, good Dutch name. But Josh. Yeah, that's me. Oh, hold on. Before I get to that point, I'll give you that there were no other nominees at 76. And as mm-hmm. a reminder, the greatest story number 76 was P.K. Subban. Okay. Yep. We're saying this boy's Dutch. He's not Dutch, Josh. He's a center from Moorhead, Minnesota. He's a spud. He's a potato. He is. He's a Moorhead spud. All right. Yeah, so so Moorhead, their high school, very, uh, you know, for an outstate team in Minnesota, that's what we call non-metro teams here. Yep. They uh, have a huge and rich hockey legacy. Yep. Like hockey powerhouse. Yep. You would call Moorhead. And their their team's mascot and nickname are the the, the spuds, spuds, basically potatoes. They're yep. the, they're the, they're potatoes. I mean, come yep. on, they, they are potatoes. And they are, if anyone wants to know, they are right next to Fargo, so they're right on the border with uh, Fargo. Okay, Vandevelde was the 97th overall selection in the 2005 NHL entry draft by the Edmonton Oilers. Vandevelde played in 278 regular season NHL games over a seven season NHL career. Vandevelde began his career playing three seasons with the Edmonton Oilers. He then played his final four seasons with the Philadelphia Flyers. Josh, his awards and accomplishments are nothing, not a zip. I think he did make WCHA uh, All-Star team or like All-American or something maybe one year, <laughs> but that's, that's about all I remember when I was looking up his stuff. So no, no NHL awards and accomplishments. Where did he go to college? Mankato? No, oh. uh, North Dakota. North Dakota. Oh, no. I bring that up, actually, in a little bit. Okay. For his career, 18 goals, 30 assists for 48 points. Vandevelde made the playoffs in one of his seven NHL seasons, compiling one goal, zero assists for one point, Josh. What do we call that? Or we used to call it? Oh, yeah. Formerly known as a half like Prince. 
formerly known as the Hafkoff. Yep, formerly known as the Hafkoff. Kofsky in six NHL games played. All right, another picture. I, I, I almost want to pause the show. I really do. <laughs> because there's no way the second greatest player in the history of the NHL to wear number 46 is eight, or 76 is 18. Nobody else has um, that number. Don't uh, I did look that up. There's like 20 to 30 guys, I think. There was a couple big names, but when I went and went and looked, they had the same, they didn't have a lot of stats. And I will say I didn't wow. I didn't check every single name because I just I started and I was like, this is dumb. I'll just we're getting just, into like the upper 70s. You get some like yeah. hot names in there, right? That's like yeah. where you get well, in. Plus, it's a bit, it's the hockey writers. We just go with what they say and then if yeah. anyone comes at us, I'm just like, hey, I'm just going with what, what their list is. Just blame them. Throw them yeah, under blame the bus. Them. Yeah, no kidding. Best season of his NHL career from a point standpoint was his 2014-15 season and his 2016-17 season, both with the Flyers, where he had a whopping 15 points in each season. Who could forget? Who could forget? Out of high school, Vandevelde was a stud, though. His senior season at Moorhead High School, Vandevelde scored 35 goals, 32 assists for 67 points in 30 games played. He then played two seasons in the USHL with the Lincoln Stars before going to the University of North Dakota. Now, he didn't get to experience, but the University of North Dakota has probably the best college hockey arena in the country by yeah. far. By far. It's got marble. It is it is immaculate. During his, during his career at UND, Vandevelde had 52 goals, 65 assists for 117 points in 166 games played. Vandevelde had a pretty quiet NHL career and bounced back and forth between the NHL and the AHL during his career. However, he did manage to play seven seasons in the NHL, which neither or Josh, <laughs> neither of us did either. So or we didn't play any years in the NHL. So no. I give him credit for that. That's not my chance. No, nope. He made it stuck around for a little bit. After his NHL career was over, Josh, Vandevelde played three seasons over in Europe, one season with Luko of the Liga League in Finland, and two seasons with EC Salzburg of the Austrian Hockey League. Currently, it looks like he is coaching youth hockey in Moorhead because I tried to find out what he was doing, and I stumbled upon Moorhead youth hockey rosters, and one of the scored A teams had him listed as a coach. And I'm guessing... You call his mom's house or something like no, that? No, I didn't. Like, I'm guessing there's hey, not a lot this of... is Troy from the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast, <laughs> Why investigative do do journalist. What's Chris up to? I'm, just, I'm assuming there's not a lot of Chris Vandeveldes <laughs> in the world, and two in Moorhead would be pretty crazy. Okay, not a lot of fun facts. There's one interesting fact, I guess. On March 18, 2016, the NHL suspended Vandeveldi for two games for an elbow to the head of our boy, Johnny Toes. Johnny, Johnny Toes. Or Johnny Taves, if you want to call him that. I like Toes. What, what, what would you bet that this is probably the thing Vandevelde is most known for in the NHL? It probably is. It's got to be, right? <laughs> yeah. He actually got, I didn't put it down, but I think I read he got crunched pretty bad too, and a guy got suspended for hitting Vandevelde. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it was retaliation or anything for Jonathan Taves, but it was, uh, I know he had something go on. Okay, there it is, Josh's rookie card. Only four graded cards ever at PSA. And we're going to go with the 2011 SP Authentic Rookie Extended Series, number R28, which has three graded copies at PSA. All three graded copies are PSA 10s. So, boom, we have 100% gem rate. Last sale, July 2nd, 2023, via eBay and verified in Terapeak for 11 US dollars. And I should wow. say... This probably, getting back to our whole rookie card discussion, this actually is not listed as a rookie card in TCDB. <gasps> so um, no. I know we had a whole conversation at that. It doesn't say rookie, I don't think, anywhere. It doesn't have an RC badge. I can't remember what the back said, but it's from the uh, – remember, we've talked about this where these guys that it's from the SP Authentic Rookie Extended Series, which then – what yeah. Extended Series became its own thing. So that's what it is. I, I went with it. There's probably there's a, there's a lot of other cards. There's a lot of Panini cards I could have probably used, but again, four graded copies ever at PSA, and three of them are this card. I just went with this one. Is this an error card? I don't know why they, they gave him the three name treatment. So that's it's weird. Um, if you look at Hockey Reference, I think they have it listed all as one. There was I found it both ways. I found mm -hmm. it with the, the split, and then with the 
what last name is a single last name. And the crazy thing is there is like a swimmer that has the same exact name. That was pretty good. So, yep, unsolved hobby mystery. We'll have to figure that one out. But there was a swimmer with the same exact name that kind of threw some of my searches off. Pretty sure we're the Chris Vandeveld, the leader <laughs> in the whole yep. hockey hobby at this point, Troy. Where else are you going to find everything you ever wanted to and didn't want to know? About Chris Vandevelde, the almost greatest player to wear the number 76 per the hockey writers, not us. <laughs> Complain to them. Yeah. What if they got like thousands of complaints? <laughs> <laughs> That'd be hilarious. Complaining about an article we wrote two years ago. Yeah. Every month they'd have to go in now and redo it or make sure everything's up to up to stuff. Right. We're getting close to the end of the regular season. Yeah. Handful of games left. Can you believe it? Season's really oh. flown by, hasn't it? It has. It has. With, And it's crazy. It's like, I mean, I have my own hockey season. Your kids have hockey, or your daughter has hockey. And it's like, all of a sudden, it's just, whoa. Oh <laughs> and here we are. We're near the end of the season. Playoff pictures are finalizing. Even there's some interesting stories there. But, yeah, almost almost to the playoffs. We're at week 26 already. Who's hot in the struggle bus? Take a look at top performers around the NHL in the past couple of weeks and players where the struggle's real. We're going to punch their ticket for the world-famous Gong Show Struggle Bus. But as always, we start with who's hot. Gosh, who would have predicted this, Troy, a couple years ago? Are you going to apologize now or later? Mm, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe wait till I'm done. I had to nominate Alexi Lafreniere. Lafreniere? Lafreniere? I don't know. One of the two. French. Take your poise. I've heard both ways. <laughs> In his last 12 games, 22-year-old Rangers forward has an impressive eight goals, seven assists, wow. for 15 points. That's good. Includes a hat trick and a five point night against Arizona on March 30th. Well, it was Arizona. Well, at least yeah. he, he did it. I again. wasn't I mean, even going to go there. No, you I have will. to apologize. You, no, this, you, have to, you have to apologize. It's, it is Arizona, but hey, that's the team you're supposed to do that against. So he did it. Mm -hmm. Troy is the first 22 year old or younger player for the Rangers since Brian Leach to have five mm. points in a game. Interesting. Also, Laffy's first NHL hat trick. Nice. And finally, it was good enough to be named NHL's third star of the week for last week. Oh, that, so pretty good nice. week for Laffy. Yep. Bringing his season total now to 26 goals, 28 assists for 54 points in 77 games played on the season. Already career highs for him in nice. both goals and points. Nice. And here's a quote from Laffy about his recent play. He says, I'm just always working hard and trying to get better every year. I'm playing my game right now and playing with confidence. That's all I'm trying to do out there. We have to keep playing the right way and keep things rolling. I uh, just love hockey player quotes, right? <laughs> cliche, cliche. Yeah. <laughs> 70 words that mean nothing. Yeah. Well, Laffy is in his fourth NHL season, just completing it now. Here's his points progression by year. So year one, 21, 31, 39, and now 54 and counting. Not to throw a uh, rain on the parade here, but, you know, it's good. Happy yes. about it. Big step forward. Still not superstar production or what I think you would hope from a number one overall pick that came into the league, of course, at the end the hobby with a ton of hype, but he mm -hmm. is continuing to get better. Yep. So I'll admit, I was doing my research last night and or the day before. Looked up a ton of articles on Laffy and headlines galore, Troy, about breakout season. Yep. It made me think, like, what what is a breakout season? Like, almost like definitionally, like, would you consider this a breakout season? For I, I consider it a, a great step forward, but again, twenty five goals and fifty points for for a number one overall pick is that? Is, I wonder is that, is if that it, the bar is for him. It almost feels like it's insulting to him that that's like the bar is so low. Well, it's like Does that sense? I yeah I, I I hear what you're saying, but I I think breakout season for each player is different. So I'm wondering if you can like quantify it say a 30 percent increase from the previous season or your career high or something i don't know yeah. 30 to 50 percent maybe we'll say because if he but goes the, like if he has like 55 56 points or whatever this year and next year he goes to 40 goals and 80 points or something yeah, like that now then, I, then i would say breakout like that's he's arrived right yeah. And I think a little bit, again, comes whether you think it's fair or unfair, his career is going to be judged and compared to other number one overall picks. Yep. That's just what happens. Now, when you look at Lappy and you consider what's the change this year, we've mentioned it before, but I'm starting to put a lot of personal stock, Troy, into this new trend of teams giving their top prospects, like 
top six roles, significant minutes, mm-hmm. and putting them in positions, I, I would say, to succeed. Where for the first really three years of Laffy's career, the Rangers have gone with the strategy of, well, let's make this kids line with Philip Heidel, yep. Apokako, Laffy. They're all like, they're all 18, 19 at the time. We'll put them in the fourth line. And then I'm assuming the idea was they'll mature together and they'll get experience and they'll work their way up the depth chart. And I think we just saw that, that it wasn't working really in a lot of cases. And now you have all these teams that are taking their top prospects and putting them with better players. And, and guess mm-hmm. what? When you play with better players, you produce more. It shouldn't be super shocking to, to anyone. Now, when you think of Laffy too, you have to consider the, the hobby market where yep. it's, it's like, is it going to get interesting again? I think the most notable thing to me about the Lafreniere hobby market has been how long it took it to die. And then it's kind of coincidental or funny where it was like the longest, slowest, most painful death, right? Where people were like hanging on for dear life. Well, it was the death by a thousand paper cuts. Yes. Yes. A hundred percent. And then they finally give up and he, he now he's like, all right, here we go. Now you got to go get those cards out, dust them off, get them all nice and ready. See what happens. But like we said, I hope, I mean, I hope he breaks out. He gets a hundred point season. It'd be awesome. We say this all the time. We poke fun at people and laugh at them, but hey, we're wild fans. So and we laugh at ourselves. Uh, yeah, we're we're never punching down. Anyone want a Caprice off PSA 10? But yeah, we root for everybody, right? I don't want anyone's cars to go down. I don't want any player to fail. So I agree with you. And especially too in New York, it would be mm-hmm. good for the league, good for the hobby to have superstar players in Rangers sweaters. Mm-hmm. So I would be all that as well and, and like I, said, I just i look at the season for him as a very nice step but I, i'm not going all in i'm not pushing no. all my chips in and buying into laffy because again 26 goals 54 points you're not going to get win a heart trophy for that or mm-hmm. rocket richard or anything like that right Let, let's see what happens next year and if he can take another hopefully bigger jump then i'll be uh, much more impressed alexi lafrenier is a 2020 young guns try psa 10 pop 1709 30% gem rate, 39% gem rate. Last sold for 159 US dollars on April 4th. Up 61% in the past two weeks and up 21% over the past three months. Don't call it a com- hobby comeback, man. Don't call it <laughs> nice. a comeback. Nice. Yeah, you, you want to show the picture? Oh my gosh. Forgot him. There he is. It's one of the worst young gun photos ever. Yeah, but... I don't love it. But that was like COVID. Actually, was... what impressed no. me about that. Wasn't this before COVID? Wouldn't this have been like... No, he was a rookie know. in 2020 with Capri Yeah, but the picture wouldn't have been like 2019-ish. What I think they did to get it in the... the they just I'm photoshopped assuming it? That they either photoshopped it or they took him to a practice rink somewhere. Oh, yeah. And took a photo of him. Yeah. True. All right, you got the second guy for who's hot. I do. This one, this one brings, makes me smile. Here he is if you're watching on YouTube. We got Frederick Anderson, Josh. So I think this is a story we're all going to get behind. It's hard not to cheer for him. And if you don't know what's been going on with him, a little background. 34-year-old Danish goalie was diagnosed with a blood clotting issue, which was discovered on November 4th of 2023. This caused Anderson to miss 49 games and it was unclear if he would be able to return this year. Up until the diagnosis... Anderson had a record of 4-1 with a 2.87 goals against and a .894 save percentage. So good wins, not nothing really impressive on the goals against or save percentage. Day before the trade deadline this year, Josh, the Hurricanes announced Anderson was activated off injured reserve. And since then, he has been on an absolute tear. Since wow. coming back, Anderson has a record of seven wins, one loss, with a 1.38 goals against average and a .949 save percentage and two shutouts. So that makes his record on the season. 11 wins, two losses, 1.97 goals against, 0.927 save percentage, and two shutouts. It's absolutely nuts. So while he was out, the Hurricanes, they had Antti Ranta and Piotr Kachekov, and they even picked up Spencer Martin when Ranta started struggling, and then now, now they got this whole situation where they have four <laughs> goalies that are NHL caliber, 
Anderson might be the game one starter for these guys, which would be kind of nuts given his age, the blood clotting issue, and just but he has basically forced their hands with how well he's been playing lately. I think Kochekov has been pretty good this year too. Like yeah, he's been. Yeah, I think so too. And just to add some more to this, to his his story for this year, Anderson was just named the Hurricanes nominee for the Bill Masterton Award. So big comeback. I I bet he's in the front running for that. If uh, with having a blood clotting, deep vein, th- what's it called? Thombo- thrombosis. Thrombosis. I think that was kind of what it was related to, a little bit of that. But to miss 49 games and then come back and just be lights out, pretty cool. Anderson's a 2013 Young Guns. PSA 10 pop is 115 with a gem rate of 68%. Recent sale of this card was on March 10th of this year via eBay. Verified in Terra Peak for 82 US dollars. This recent sale is a huge jump from where this card was going for in January. In January of 2024, there were five sales, and this was in the middle of his injury streak that were verified in Terra Peak, and they ranged from 30 to 45 US dollars. So then we have this March 10th sale after he comes announced he's coming back for $82. Take what you want with it. I don't know. Seems seems a little weird, but we'll see. I have a question. Yes. How many days do you think in the last, let's say, 4,000 years have Frederick Anderson and Auntie Ranta both been healthy at the same time? <laughs> yeah, never. I, mean, I, are... I like pay no attention to it, and I, but I always know one of them's hurt for yep. some reason. Yep. How's that possible? <laughs> I don't know. Be so frustrating. Okay, so we have Laffy, oh, Frederick oh, Anderson, oh. and now I, I think this next one, Troy, is it the first time ever that Sid has been on Who's Hot? Maybe. I, I searched real quick and I didn't see him, but it was funny because I actually did that because then I didn't see yours already and I actually wrote him in. And then I oh. like looked down and I was like, oh, Josh got him. I'm- I hope he didn't get too far. <laughs> No, no, I, I just literally typed the name. Hey, you become you kind of the, the Sid fanboy lately. So sorry, I didn't I mean to take that from you. Wait till the mailbag. I even get even greater with my fanboyish. In his last eight games played, the 36 year old Penguin superstar, has seven goals, and nine assists for 16 points. It's good enough to try to lead the NHL in scoring over the past two weeks. What a season it's been for Sid, huh? Yeah. Incredible. So much of the attention, too, was on Ovi at the start of the year. I think many were not writing Sid off as a player, but just writing the season off, like not expecting much. And I'd put myself probably in that camp. Were you expecting him to go off like this this year? No, I thought it was, I thought this was the start of the decline. Like mm-hmm. now it's going to fall off a cliff and boy, was I wrong on the season. Now, Troy Crosby has 40 goals, 45 assists for 85 points in 77 games played. It's his first 40 goal season since 2016 17 when he had 44 goals that year. Only his third NHL season ever with 40 or more goals. Hmm. His career high is 51, which he had in the 2009 2010 season. And Troy, Sid is only the fifth player in NHL history to score 40 or more goals in a season at age 36 or older. Can you name wow. any or all of the other four, Troy? Oh boy, Sid is the fifth player in NHL to score 40 or more goals in a season at age 36 at age... or older. There should be one pretty easy one. Cicerelli? No. <laughs> oh, Ovechkin. Yeah, that's one. Okay. Then the next three are a little tougher. Yeah, these are they all older guys? Nobody that's currently playing. Yeah, I was gonna say they're probably all these old guys because they had we had those huge number of years in the eighties oh. and stuff. And I'm wondering if one of those guys, Marcel Dion. Oh, Timu? I should Timu. I should have got those. Phil Esposito and Brandon Shanahan. Yeah, I would never got Esposito or Shanahan. Mm-hmm. Crosby's pretty close to also he's pretty close to a couple of huge career milestones. So he's played now. 1,267 career games. He has 590 goals, 997 assists for 1,587 points. That puts him, of course, 10 goals shy of 600 and three assists away from 1,000. He's also four points away from passing Phil Esposito on the all-time scoring rankings for the 10th spot, which would will then become a top 10 all-time NHL scorer. Mm. 
I would so there could all three of those things could happen before the end of this year. Yeah, that's that's nice. Okay, Troy. Another trivia question. I'm oh. having so much fun with these trivia questions. <laughs> oh. There's four active players in the top 50 all-time NHL scores, including Crosby. Can you name any or all of the other three? Ovi. Mm. Oh, I know one because I did a. I remember he was like number fifty because I did a thing on him. I remember I had to do something on him, Kopitar. Yeah. And yep. then, oh boy, well that would have been the tough a, one. Yeah, Kopitar. No. Oh, ah, uh, uh, what's his name? Patty Kane. Kane three. Is that three? Yep. There's one more. There's one more. I don't know. The teammate of Sid. Oh, Malkin. Mm. Yeah, so Balkan is 37th, 1,291 points. Patty Kane, 39th, 1,279 points. And you're right, Anzi Kopitar. I thought Kopitar would be the one you would never get. No, I remember I had to do something on it. Where's your Ovi? Where's Ovi? I, I forgot Ovi. Oh. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I knew. Yeah, it took me a sec, but I remember I did something on it. What was I looking? Maybe a who's hot. And I remember he was like number 50 at all time for career scoring. What do you think is motivating Sid at this point? There's no way there's winning a cup. I well, wonder. No, I think that's just trying to like for the nature, Olympics. man. This is this guy. It's like yeah. hockey is his life. I mean, I don't think he has a personal life. It's all been hockey for 20 years or whatever, how long he's been playing. I just, I don't think he is one of those guys that accepts failure really well. Do you think like with like the new sort of, no sugar, Tom Brady, whatever, like pliability things and all these new wage kind of body treatments where it almost feels like 36 isn't as old as, yeah. as it was. So yeah. he could have two, three good years left. And I think he's making a strong case for that Olympic spot in 2026. Why would you not want him on your Olympic team? I don't care if he's Got 10 goals and five assists over the season as the leadership position. Why would you not want him out there? Remarkably, too, Troy, his team, which are the Penguins, not, not sure if you're aware of that, <laughs> still hanging up for dear life. Yep. They're in the last wildcard spot of the Eastern Conference, currently in a dogfight with the Flyers, who never seem to win the <laughs> Capitals and uh, Red Wings. So, again, pretty magical season for Kid. I saw, too, Troy, speaking of the Masterton Trophy, that Sid was the Penguins nomination. No, nope, no, nope. Frederick Anderson. <laughs> Ooh. Sid's got enough yeah. hardware. Sidney Crosby is a 2005 06 Young Guns PSA 10 pop 1097 with a 52% gem rate, lasts over 2600 US dollars on April 2nd, down about 7% in the past couple of weeks, but still up 8% over the past three months. All right, she's pulled up, Troy. The rickety rackety struggle bus is here. Uh, who's the first player on it? All right, Josh. Well, I went the goalie route again. I'm going to show him on YouTube. Is he our boy? Do we like this guy? Elvis Merz Lincolns. I don't Elvis. think I do, and I'm going to tell you why. Because I think he popped off earlier this year about yeah, I did. his like, <laughs> main situation, and then he's just sucked. So it's like you can't you – if you're going to – Talk the talk. You got to walk the walk, right? And was he the one whose wife was getting yelled at in the stands, though? Oh, I, I could see being upset about that. Yeah, she was. She was. It was. Yeah, Can that's I jump right to the point and just ask my 10,000 foot question. Oh, yeah. In your, in your mind, honestly, this is an honest question. Is he the worst goal in the NHL? Oh, I don't know. I mean, he's, I don't know. I don't know enough. I haven't watched enough of these goalies to know. Who's the absolute? But maybe statistically over the past. Statistically, he's probably he's right in the running. Now, if you get probably gotta say like a minimum of what 40 games, probably we'll say. But yeah, he's probably he's probably in the running for that one. So let's let's look at Merz Lickens. March was not the month for him. (laughs) He he was awful. He has struggled pretty mightily. In fact, the whole season has been pretty rough. I've seen worse seasons, but man, it, it like you said, it's it's not been that great. So for the month of March, Merz Lincolns has a record of two wins, four losses, one overtime loss with a 4.48 goals against 0.869 save percentage and no shutouts. 
things really went sideways in March when Merz Lincolns had three straight games, Josh, of giving up six goals in each of those games. <laughs> That's when you start thinking about retiring because that just uh, – goalies giving up six in a row for three games is not good. Mm. On the season, Merz Lincolns is – has a record of 13 wins, 17 losses, eight overtime losses with a 3.45 goals against average, 0.89 save, save, 0.897 save percentage, and one shutout. I'll tell you what, if your goals against average is 3.45, you ain't going to stick around long if, if you can't right the ship with that. that that's not a good one. Merz Lincolns has had some minor injuries in March, which I'm guessing has probably affected his play a little bit. There's also a lot of speculation on what will happen with him once Columbus hires a new general manager to replace interim general manager John Davidson, who took over for Yarmo, and I'm not even going to try it, or I'll try it, Kekalainen, <laughs> when he was fired. Oh, wait, I just looked yeah. right in the last five years' stats. Yeah, what's he at? Actually, not that bad. Like, his goals against sucks. It's 3.2. Yeah, that's But he's got bad. a .904 save percentage. Okay, I mean... Lower end of what you want, but he's 68, 78, and 10. Okay. So he's, I mean, there's definitely, it's one of those guys you got to show, like you said, you, you want to talk to talk. You're start walking the walk. He will be really hard to move <laughs> as he has a cap hit of 5.4 million over the next three years. Plus, he has a modified no trade clause where he can select 10 teams he doesn't want to be traded to. Things have also been tense between Merz Lincolns and head coach Pascal Vincent as Merz Lincolns was benched in January for some games and he was not that pleased. The Athletic reported that Merz Lincolns pushed back saying he didn't want to be the organization's number three goaltender. At that point in the season, goaltender Spencer Martin was getting more work than our boy Elvis and that he wanted a different scenario, meaning he wanted his old job back. The club and Merz Lincolns both insisted that he hadn't requested a trade. Then two days later on January 15th, Merz Lincolns told reporters after a shootout win over Vancouver that he had requested a trade. The following day, Merz Lincolns agent, Jerry Johansson, told The Athletic that Merz Lincolns had misspoken when he said that he requested a trade. Get your stick and story straight there, uh, Elvis. But sounds like things are a little tense between him and the head coach. His play isn't helping it very much, so we will see how that plays out. But for now, he's on the struggle bus. Nice warm seat waiting for him. Well, here's the thing. You want to be treated as the number one goaltender? Mm-hmm. Play like a number one play goaltender. Play like a number one goaltender. Exactly. It's amazing. You know, it, it, it's, if, it, if a team has to choose, it means you're not separating yourself. It shouldn't yep. be a choice. Yep. Yep. Don't give them the option. Merz Lincolns is a 2019 Young Guns PSA 10 pop 189 with a gem rate of 51%. Recent couple of sales have been around 29 US dollars. There you go. Elvis Merlincoln, Merz Lincolns I, on the struggle bus. Me <laughs> saying his name. Same it's as me Elvis on the struggle bus. All right, Troy. Joining Elvis is Lucas Raymond, 22 year old Swedish mm. forward for your Detroit Red Wings. Troy has just only one assist in his last six games. Going back to March 23rd, not good because they are fighting desperately for a playoff yeah. spot. So they need everybody to up their game at this point. Prior to going a little bit cold, Raymond was on a heater. He produced nine points in the six games. Again, prior to the going pretty cold at that point. After putting up 23 goals, 34 assists for 57 points in 82 games as a rookie, that was 2021-22. Of course, there was a ton of excitement surrounding Lucas Raymond and his potential. Then last season, he took a step backwards, scored 17 goals, finishing with 45 points. Now he's rebounded. Not a huge step forward, but he's currently sitting at 25 goals, 36 assists for 61 points. All career highs for goals, uh -huh. assists, and points, but pretty close, though, to his rookie year. Not a breakout season, though, right? Not a breakout season. <laughs> Red Wings do seem to be happy with how Raymond has played this year. He's contributed um, in a lot of key moments, keeping them in the playoffs hunt, especially a few weeks ago when Dylan Larkin was out. He sort of stepped up when he was going through a little bit of that a hot streak and uh, helped the team keep in the playoff hunt. To me, though, Troy, the question about Lucas Raymond and really another or a number of other players on the Red Wings is who will ultimately separate themselves mm -hmm. as the hobby guy. 
And also, does Raven have another level or two he can get to, right? Yeah, when you're a young guy, 25 goals, 50 points, 60 points is nice, but that's not a hobby star numbers. So when you kind of break down their team, you've got Dylan Larkin, nice player, been around for a while, right, since 2015, not a hobby star, local, maybe PC guy, captain, but not on the Austin Matthews level or anything like that. Then you got Patrick Kane, who, of course, was a hobby star. Yeah. Is he still? I don't know. He's bounced around a lot. Kind of been inconsistent. Had the injury issues. Mo Sider won the Calder. Rock solid defenseman. Anchor type guy on the blue line. But probably isn't Kale McCarr or Quinn Hughes. And there's you got to admit, there's not a lot of seats on the hobby elite defenseman bus, whatever that is. Yeah. And Maybe I think, one uh, seat on the bus. So it's like a motorcycle. <laughs> Yeah, well, I was going to say, I think DeBrincat had like a second of trying to be a hobby guy, yeah. but then he's kind of collapsed. You got DeBrincat, and then you got these super young guys like Jonathan Berger, Bergeron or Simon <laughs> Edmondson. I hate that name. <laughs> yeah. It's like too many G's and too many R's. Stop <laughs> it. So, I don't know. I, I, I think Raymond could be the guy, but you got to, we need, he's another guy. Like, we need to see that yeah. step. And I think like that's what it comes down to. You you hit to this like 22, 23 year old range, and you either stay in like Kevin Fiala territory or you make that jump to to superstar. And of course, as when we're prospecting, we we try to convince ourselves all these guys are going to be superstars. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know. Have you seen much of Raymond? What do you I think? haven't. I just I mean, I, 61 career highs is nice, but hopefully next year like see a little more jump, get to 85 somewhere in there. It seems like we're expecting more and more out of these guys, kids, when they're young, too. Yeah. So where maybe five years ago, you'd say 22 years old and 60 yeah. points. It's amazing. But it's like, <laughs> that's amazing. Now go back to the AHL and get better. Lucas Raymond is a 2021 Young Guns PSA 10 has a pop of 3,029. 72% jam rate. Yeah. Twice, 72 this was the card, out. man, right? Remember yeah. that? Him and Cider. Him and Cider. Crazy. Like crazy 100 times. bucks raw for a moment. <laughs> Well, the PSA 10 toy last sold for 58 US dollars on April mm. 4th, up 25% over the past couple weeks, but still down 11% over the past three months. Um, there we are, week 26. Who's hot? We had Laffy, Frederick Anderson, and Sid the Kid. Yep. Not much of a kid anymore. <laughs> then struggling, Elvis Merzlinkins and Lucas Raymond. All right, got to make a quick mention for Gong Show partner sponsor Slab Sharks. Very thankful. To them for their support of our show. The current Slab Sharks weekly eBay auction is live. You want to head to slabsharks.com for a link to the auction and place your bids. On Saturday morning, I, I don't know why I wrote this. Oh, I was trying to go through their auction and my little puppy Kobe was like on the couch <laughs> behind me, like staring, like staring out the window at like birds and like going nuts, like barking and gnarling and it's so annoying. Puppies can be annoying. Yeah. As breaking news. Do you have a button bar breaking news sounder? <laughs> boop, 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 boop. Uh, it's weird. Our, our button bar sounds a lot like just you making noises. <laughs> like my mouth. Uh, button bar, it's coming. Okay, but I did look through the auction. I found a bunch of cards that I like, and I'll get your opinion on them too. First one, tries you. Who knows? You might want to commemorate your guy Austin Matthews, <laughs> sixty goals on the year. Yeah. How about a twenty sixteen seventeen future watch auto at a nine ninety nine PSA ten? That's a big card, huh? Big card. Are you a fan of his future watch? No, I don't. Why? I, I don't like cr- just the picture. I don't like. He looks like he's hunched over, weird. I just, it's like they had to compress his image into a small spot. It, like his body doesn't look right proportionally. His thighs look way too big. I'm just nitpicky, but I don't like clean face. Uh, yeah, Matthews you want either. mustache, Austin you mustache, want Austin mustache, definitely. Well, how about a one on one Yarmir Yager, 2014 15. Premier Platinum Blue Auto 101. Nice looking card in the Devils uniform. It's always weird to see players like that. Yeah. In. I know. It's like when Yager's in Florida Panther jerseys. I'm like, hmm. <laughs> okay. So when you look at a signature, I think it's a very nice signature. You got the Yarmir, and then you got something going on. But what does it look like a number eight? It does what look like it? an eight. I think it was supposed to be an 88, maybe, or 68. And maybe it's. I don't, I don't know, know. like a combo thing. Why did I say 88, 68? It's like half know. the infinity sign. It's like the infinity sign <laughs> on the bottom and the Stanley Cup cup on the or, top. No, or know. is it a little devil? Like are those little oh, devil horns? Well, yeah, devil horns. You're right. But, Maybe. Yeah, who knows? 
I just thought it was you don't see a lot of one on one Yagers. Mm-hmm. You know, Mitra, I'm a big Leon Dreisaitl guy. Here's a yep. 2014 exquisite collection rookie patch auto out of 29. I really like this card. Nice big patch window. It's a two color patch, but it's an interesting one. It's got yeah. like the letters, pieces, or numbers from the. I'm assuming you think that's like letter or numbers. I don't what know that? what that. I thought I think it's numbers more than it's got to be numbers, right? Mm-hmm. It's got an auto. It's got the one thing you don't like though, the rookie. Yep. The background. I just don't like the background auto. on on autos. Okay, Trey. Then we need to get our Bedard quote in. Can't fall asleep at the wheel on Connor Bedard here. I had to go with the uh, 2024, very controversial in the hobby. UD ex- employee exclusives auto yep. gold ink. It's the only Bedard on card auto to this point. Remember, to this point, not forever. Um, there's some corner stuff going on, but I think a lot of these cards have it's a really tough card to ever PSA tag. You, know, <laughs> you, you think PSA is like, we got to bend these corners because we can't be mm-hmm. giving our employees the, p- the perfect gem copies or we'll get called out for it. And then the last one that stood out to me, Troy, is a 1990 Pro Set Stanley Cup oh, hologram. There it, is. PSA 6. there it is. Here's why I think you should buy this. Because then at least somebody in the state could say they brought the Stanley Cup to Minnesota. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Right? At PSA card, 6, it's a pop 48, only 26 yeah, graded this, higher, by the way. This card will go for big money. Yeah. Well, if you're a Canadian hockey cards collector or looking to sell some of your cards for cash, maybe get some cash for the next big PC purchase, we'd recommend considering Slab Sharks eBay consignment services. Slab Sharks makes it ridiculously easy to sell your cards on eBay. They do all the work from photos to doing the listings, hunting down payment, shipping anywhere in the US and Canada, and handling any post sale issues. And remember, with all you guys pulling all those new Bedards from SP Game Used this week. Slapsharks yep. is offering 98% payout rates on all Bedard cards through June 1st. So check out Slapsharks.com for complete consignment information and start consigning your cards to them today. Hobby news! Hobby news! Well, Troy, last show, we speculated, that was Thursday, on whether the Connor Bedard <laughs> Young Guns PSA 10 pop would hit 1,000 by today. So almost exactly a month after the Series 2 release. Yep. Guess it's our moment of truth. You ready? Are you nervous? Are you scared? A drum no, roll, you know, button bar. I'm confident. Confident. Okay, as of today, the pop count for Connor Bedard's Young Gun PSA 10 is 1,045. There it is. It's an increase of 194 PSA 10s in the past four days. 2,301 of these cards have been graded, so it's a 45% overall gem rate, Troy, down 1% from our last up- update. So I want to see how much you've been paying attention to our show. Oh, a little point of context here. Do you remember what the oh. PSA 10 pop count was for Sidney Crosby? 1700. It's 1000. It's 1097. Okay. I, my first thought was 1200, but that's like, nah, I'll go higher. So we're probably what, two days or a yep. day away. Yeah. From breaking from there that. being more. Connor Bedard, Young Gun PSA 10s, then Sidney Crosby, Young Gun PSA 10s. That's crazy. Now, back it was a bigger deal back in the day. There's less yeah. printed. I just think it's kind of funny that, like, how fast this is jumping up there. So now the, now the question, in everybody's mind, I'm sure, when does it hit 2K? How many days do you think it takes? So we're each going to guess now, Troy, and then we'll reference this probably three and a half days from now when it hits 2K. Let's see who won. But really, though, how many do you think another month? Do you think it's less than a month? Less than a month. I would say like uh, three weeks. No, I'm going to go like 14 days. I'm going to go 18 days. Okay. All right. Mark it down. I'll write it down. Go with no pad. The other thing I'm curious about this card is as we get now we get more and more sets released. So we had SP Game Used come out, Black Diamonds coming out soon, which we're going to talk about later on the show. Now you've got the confluence of more and more PSA tens, the pop count getting higher and higher. Yep. And more options. Way more Betsy cards in the marketplace. See what happens to the value of this card. Does it stay around thirteen hundred? Or does it start to dip a little bit? Well, I've been watching, I was watching, or I was trying to look up the raw version today, and it looks like it's coming down. It's under 400. I've seen a couple sales in the 380s. 
three seventies maybe. Are there is the condition bad on those? Did you check that out? I didn't check them too hard. I mean, they were there was only one or two sales, and they were very recently. But we'll see if that trend continues. All right, we'll keep following it. Moving on, Troy. Fourteen-year-old Landon Dupont granted exceptional status to play at fourteen years old in the WHL, the Canadian Hockey League. Dupont is again fourteen from Calgary. Alberta, Canada, not eligible for the NHL draft until 2027. <laughs> Makes him just the second WHL player after Connor Bedard to receive exceptional status and the ninth player in CHL history to be granted it. So you have John Tavares, Aaron Ekblad, Connie McDavy, John Day, Joe Valino, Shane Wright, Bedard, Michael Misa, and now Landon DuPont. Do you know? So it'd be like Shane Wright, Bedard, Misa, and this kid. Four of them are pretty recently, right? Would that be within yeah. the lab? So it seems like it's kind of accelerating. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, of the nine total players, now DuPont, Aaron Eckland, and Sean Day are the only defensemen. Okay. So Landon DuPont plays defense. He has 19 goals, 49 assists for 63 points in 30 games played. With Troy, one of your favorite Canadian prep teams, the Edge School U18 prep. Is, so is this a fake fake school, like a hockey academy? I don't know how that works. If they have like fake high I don't school know. Yeah, it's not. If it's like Canada. Shattuck or. But we should ask Jeremy school, Lee because that's in his yeah. town, so he would. Edge know. School seems kind of suspicious. <laughs> a scout compared his play style to Bo and Byram, I guess. Whatever that means. <laughs> I don't know. It's just crazy to me that fourteen-year-olds like have. Are having like scouts go to their games and do and write up on their abilities. So maybe we should start like a scouting service for like mites or something like that. We can be like, you're, um, yeah, you're gonna crack off, Josh. I just I just went to the Edge Schools website, and when your school's first thing you see on their page is the spring and summer hockey camp registration. Oh yeah, <laughs> I think you got a pretty good idea. But their tagline is "We graduate." We it's it's actually about graduating awesome humans. There you oh, go. Good for them. <laughs> In related news, Troy, David Adams just posted pre-sales <laughs> for 2027-28 Upper Deck Series 2, only $849 per hobby box. Nice. In a hurry yep. because they're almost sold out. Yeah, maybe sold out tomorrow. You never know. You're gonna get those emails trying to get you to buy some more boxes. Hurry before it's too late. <laughs> Gotta get jump on these kids early. So yeah, we'll land in DuPont. Going to the CHL at 14 years old. I don't know if we've talked about Matt Rempe enough. I love my headline <laughs> for this. The devil made me do it. Right. So did you see this whole I stat said, line for his three for Matt Rempe of the New York Rangers? He's played three games this season versus the New Jersey Devils. Troy. Now here's a stat line. Let me know if you've ever heard of anything like this in your life. He's averaged five minutes, three seconds, total time on ice. Has 47 <laughs> penalty minutes and was ejected in all three games. Wow. He, I don't know. Yeah, what do you I, make of all this? So let's let's go back. If you listen to the first shows where he was on, I was like, oh, this is awesome. This kid just comes in and starts fighting, barreling at everyone. I love it. I don't know how long you can stay around doing this. Like at some point, you've got to not just take be a warm body on the bench for four minutes a game. Like you literally got to do something to help the team besides getting penalty minutes and ejected. I know he has a role. He's probably never going to be like our offensive threat, but you need to figure it out because you can't be getting ejected all the time, but I get it. He brings energy. Gets, I'm sure the Ranger fans love him. I mean, how could you not? He's got two black eyes in this picture, but I've seen him get his butt rocked a couple times in fights. So he's, <laughs> he's got some learning very questionable, to like dirty hits too. Yeah. Like yeah. Nope. Maybe a little over the line. Yeah, that's my question. You know the you know hockey a lot better than I do as far as sort of how a player like this affects the team. I mean, they are 10, 2, and 1 with him in the lineup. So I don't know there you go. Maybe how much it. correlation is there, but I, I tend to agree with you. It's like it's like you're like a sideshow act or something yeah. like that. You know, and yeah, you get everyone fired up, but eventually that isn't going to work every game. I don't know. It, it just, it just doesn't, it's like if there's barely a spot for like a Ryan Reeves. Yeah. How is there a spot for uh, a Matt 
Rampy. And then Laviolette is like so old school, right? Yeah. I'm sure that he like on more of a sort of a oh well, like a money ball, like yeah. analytics driven team. Would they want anything like this guy? I don't, I just don't know. Yeah. In 14 games on the season, he's got a goal, an assist, and 69 penalty minutes. I'm kind of figuring he'll be in series one. Like that would mean. <laughs> I don't know if they'd put him in extended. No, that's probably, too late for that. Yeah. You think he'll be a big chase? No. You don't? Nope. You think it, do you think he'll be a bigger chase than like Arbor Jack I was? Uh, I don't know. Because the Arbor Jack I moment kind of is gone now. That's yeah. what Right. I just Does it's a flash in the pan kind of thing. Plus, if his card comes out next year for series one, I think he probably loses a lot of momentum. Yeah. Yeah, we'll see. All right, we're gonna move on. So believe it or not, like we said, we're getting towards the end of the NHL season. And traditionally, Troy, as you know, both the start of the new NHL season and during the playoffs are kind of regarded as some of the best times to sell your cards, sort of peak selling opportunity. As we said, you know, believe it or not, playoffs are coming. Of course, not for our wild. (laughs) That may be a a topic, though, for boys. So much of me wants to just go off on our team, Troy. I actually have a name for We could start a site if we had any time. We should do a podcast called Tortured. Tortured. (laughs) Just we're just... (laughs) whine about the wild the whole time okay back to the hobby well so why is the beginning of new season on playoffs such a good time to sell I, I think it's two factors really that boil it down there's a ton of excitement of course and then hope yep and by hope i mean unless you're a wild fan yep shots fired can you tell i'm bitter yet or no <laughs> well they stunk had a coach yeah. change a bunch of stuff happened yeah. this year dead cat money we can't win now, just because it's peak selling time doesn't mean you're guaranteed to sell your cards. No, of course, there's no guarantees in life unless in, unless you're looking for disappointment in our, our world. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, well, preamble over. Here's our tips to maximizing your selling opportunity and maybe making some profits this playoff season. So my first tip, Troy, is be ready, be prepared. Yep. Playoffs start April 20th, which is a Saturday, not Two weeks from now, basically, it'll be here in a blink of an eye. Start now. Yeah. <laughs> Start looking at your cards now. There, that's my hip. If you're inclined to move some cards, you probably should be going through your collection in the next few days, organizing them, getting them ready. If it's me, Troy, I'm kind of looking for two things. I'm looking for stars that I'm willing to yep. move, like are there McDavid cards or Matthews, McKinnon, McCarr, etc. Pastas. And then I'm then I'm going to try to set aside some of the younger guys that. I think could pop off have a big game or two and where people get all of a sudden pretty excited about them and ready to list them at that point. So again, just like you said, the whole point is to be ready. Playoffs are unpredictable. Like one of the things we see all the time, almost every year is like a goalie will just have like three, four games in a row where he's unbelievable. And then all of a sudden young guns are double tripling quadrupling. And you just want to make sure that you're organized and can find your cards. Uh, Any tips that like that you have for, specifically like around organization do you, how do you do it no I, do, I mean it's just go through your stuff make sure you know who the playoff teams are who's in the hunt just make sure you have that all cleared and then figure out who you want to move if there's anything you want to move you're trying to thin thin the herd or make get rid of some cards that's the best way to do it is just look at the standings see see where the playoffs are sitting and then get your get your stuff ready don't do it on the day of pl- game one don't yeah. then be like, oh, I should probably go through my cards. Do it now. I agree with that. I think making the decision when you're clear headed and not swept up in the moment like everyone else is good. Yeah. And then also, like, I think along with that, determining now what would be a win for you as far as selling price. Mm-hmm. And we'll get to that in a minute. My next piece of advice, Troy, is to understand the selling windows can be very intense, but are small. Mm hmm. Like you, this is a not a two month long opportunity. So as an example, like if you if a player in your team or another team even watching has an amazing game or two and you start a, a seven day auction two days later, 
that player's team yep. could be literally out of the playoffs <laughs> by the time yep. the auction is over. So my idea is, and kind of the way I approach it, when it's out of nowhere, guys, I prefer like a reason. I'm going to say it's like very carefully to a reasonably priced buy it now versus an auction. Yeah. And again, keyword there being reasonably priced. If your goal is to truly move the card, I would consider, and actually you're much better at this than I am, 5 to 10% less than the last comp. In other words, like take the win. I think for so many people, it goes against like our human nature. Yeah. Like if you're selling a card, it's like <laughs> we all want to sell every card we own or every card we sell for an all-time record sale. Yeah. <laughs> but that just eliminates potential buyers yes. when you price your cards over current market, right? Everyone wants to feel like they're getting a deal. And, and so here's my like, example. And I've actually had this play out for myself. And so I've been guilty of this, but Troy, let's say you buy a card for like $50 mm-hmm. and then you see, Oh my gosh, one just sold for a hundred. Cause maybe the player had like five goals in a playoff series or something like that. If you sell it now for like, if you sell like a $90 buy it now, sure, it's $10 less than the, maybe the biggest sale in the last six months. But I think people are much more likely to actually buy it mm-hmm. at that level than if you try to price it at 120. I think reflexively, yep. people are like, oh, the last one was 100, so I'm going to price 120. Yep. What happens though is then nobody buys it. And then that moment of hype or excitement passes. And then all of a sudden, it's three months later, and now the card sells for 70. Yep. So you turn down probably 90. And then a couple months later, you can even get 70 for it. Right. Mm-hmm. Has that ever happened to you? I don't know. This is something you're so, cocky, you're so good at moving. I was going to say this sounds cocky. No, but I I probably haven't got that or uh, a huge pro. Or what's what I'm trying to say? I've never really sold way above a comp. I always mm-hmm. do what you said. Go 10 to 15 below. Because usually when I'm selling, I just want to get it out. I want to move it. Mm-hmm. It's tough to resist that kind of uber greed yeah. part inside of you and to just take the wins. And then I think, Troy, if you do go the auction route, I would time auctions to end at the beginning of playoff series. So as an example, and this is, goes back to like getting prepared now, playoffs begin Saturday, April 20th. I would time the auctions to end Saturday night, that Saturday night or Sunday night. If you want to sell the McDavid's or Austin Matthews of mm-hmm. the world. And then I think, too, over the last couple of years and what I've observed, if you're willing to be a little bit on the risky side, and you want to dance the dance of luck mm-hmm. a little bit. I actually think the highest selling opportunity or the most hype and hoopla is at the beginning of the second round. Now it's harder to peg when exactly that will start for a said player that you're trying to sell, or if your player won't get knocked out in the first round. Do you, do you think that's when the Maple Leaf fans start saying, maybe, maybe this is the, I year. think so. Well, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I think. It's like, it's like you're and I'm one of them. Of, like, they're my Canadian team. Your dread of getting knocked out in the first round is subsided. Yep. And now and now it's like even as like with a super fatalist nature, if that if that's what you have, there's a party that starts to think, could this happen? Right. And you get really excited about mm-hmm. your player. I don't know. Do, do you have any t- was... ideas that you use on timing? Do you agree that the start of the series is yeah, that's that's, I, that's what I would usually typically do. However, I'll say this too. If you do want to go the auction route also, you, you mentioned going the auction route. You don't have to do seven days. You could, And this is even days. specific. You could do, I think they have one day even or three yeah. days. I think you're going to pay a higher fee, I think, on the auction on the oh, final I know prize. That. I, never I thought there it, was so. something like that. Don't ask. I'm, I've never even actually done a one day or a three day. So, But that is an option if you want to take a shorter time period but still have the auction. Last thing I'll say in the, in the term of advice is, and I don't think people do this enough, promote your own listings. Mm-hmm. Whatever platform you put them on, especially if you have a decent social media presence, you can create a lot of awareness by doing story posts on Instagram or Facebook posts or whatever, whatever Reddit. If you're, uh, you can, I don't think you can do Reddit, but yeah, well, it depends, well, it depends on form it's in, I think, mm-hmm. or subreddit. Get my terms right. Never hurts to, because. I'm assuming a lot of people that follow you may have the same 
fuck the same team. It's like, or players and big part of a lot of times it, like, you have no idea like how many of these record posts we do of a card and it feels like almost everyone you get some of the comments i had no idea this was for sale i would have yeah. totally yep. been in on this one then flipping over to the buying side a little bit just a reminder this is peak selling time it's going to happen to all of us we're going to get super pumped about a player we're going to get all emotional about it Troy will cry. Mm -hmm. And just remember the cards are going to be at a premium. If you fall in love with the player, I think this is like, tell yourself this now. You don't have to buy the commodity card during the playoffs. Yep. If it's a Young Guns, they will be for sale every day, whether it be when the dude is lighting it up in the playoffs or playing golf in the offseason. Make a note. Say, get this card during the offseason. Now, because it's peak selling time, there are people that are smart. And if there's, this is where you'll see like the grails that start to come out too. Yeah. So yeah, you might have to overpay to get a grail, but, but there should be a, a decent grail opportunity for a number of these guys. I expect mm -hmm. to see some big McDavid's Austin Matthews uh, pop up for sale in the next few weeks. Any yeah. other buying tips that you have? No, if you, if you want to buy, like you said, just be patient. But you also could go if it's a guy that's kind of burst on the scene. You can always try to find someone that has, say, a young guns for sale that forgot about it. <laughs> and they're still selling it for super. Yeah, cheap. they didn't change their prices. That's yeah, good... you, you could do that too, or go to like I know sometimes we we hear a lot of people say that's one of their strategies on Comp C because it's a lot of people that buy from EPACs and then they might just list them on there and they forget about them. And that's one way. And I think Comp C they also list on eBay. But race down to the card shop and go through the dollar boxes. <laughs> yeah, um, you could do that. Uh, that two dollar young guns that's yep. now selling for 20. <laughs> well, good luck if you're buying or selling. It should be a fun postseason. And uh kind of can't wait to see who I love when players have those moments where the hobby just goes crazy. Yeah, I mean, that's it's a lot of fun. Okay, new product releases. Another big set coming out, Troy, very, very soon. But a week and a half away from the next release and continuation of Bedarda Palooza with the release of 2023 24 Black Diamond scheduled for April 17th. The checklist is out. And as we do on the show, we're going to break it down, look at some of the key card designs. So we all can be prepared for the product and maybe help some people make the decision if you're going to be in or out. If you're going to be buying your own personal boxes or cases or breaking the product or buying singles on the secondary market, however you go about navigating through the hobby. So let's dig into Black Diamond. Okay, Troy. There are 3,179 <laughs> unique cards on the 2023-24 Black Diamond set. Are 3,000 Connor Bedard? No. We'll get to that. <laughs> this was a monster. I was telling you before we started recording. Yeah. That this took me like four hours. And I'm not like proud to admit that. <laughs> man these checklists get so meandering and yeah. to try to put this in a way that is like makes sense and isn't just reading off random sell sheet. yeah sell sheets uh, it's really hard to kind of get your head wrapped around some of these sets the base set has 160 total cards try okay the vets so it's broken down like by vets legends and rookies the Vets base are out of 349, so everything is numbered. Yeah. There's 10 legends in the in the base set that are out of their base cards out of 349 as well. So it's Chelios, Lindros, Potvin, LaFontaine, Messier, Modano, Brad Park, Timu Solani, Eiserman, and Gretzky. Interesting that Brad Park is sometimes it feels so random, doesn't it? Um, yeah, maybe they signed him or recent signed yeah him. And definitely I great player deserves to be on here but yeah i don't i don't remember seeing his name pop up a lot lately one thing that kind of confused me then getting to the rookies is you basically have two rookie base sets so you have just rookies and then you have the whole diamond relic rookie gems yeah so the rookies base set again is out of 349. So that, that does include like Bedard, Brock Favor, Devin Levi, Dustin Wolf, Matthew Nice, Luke Hughes. There's no Leo Carlson or Logan Cooley All in right. base at rookies. Uh, 
Oh, sorry, I just sneezed. <laughs> All vets and legends and rookies have six parallels. So, like, you're looking at one of them on YouTube. That's the green parallel. There's red out of 75, blue out of 25, green out of 10, diamond relics out of five, gold 101, and pure black diamond relics. Oh, oh, is this where I have a discussion? Is that a boo? Two one oh ones. I'm I'm yeah, I was gonna ask you. I don't I don't like that. I don't like it either. I, I'm not a fan of it. There's something else in parallels here that is coming up in a minute that I think I like even less. But yeah, it's like yeah, you ha- you ha- it gets confusing. Like when you see a card on eBay and you're like, wait a minute, what is it? Which one one is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. 87 players from the base set appear in the pure black premium relics checklist. Those are out of five, twenty-five, or fifty. So this is like a what a Simon Evanson. Yeah. Nice patch. Card looks okay. Kind of looks like a marble countertop, doesn't it? It does. It does. Especially diamonds, right? I those are so, yeah. Yeah. Then the, another example is a we have Gretzky out of five. That has a, a kind of cool piece of mem. Is that a glove? Well, when would that's he be wearing a glove that looks like it's from 1910? Yeah, I don't know what that is. It could be. So if he started in 79, 80, maybe that's like a shoulder pad. I mean, those were pretty crappy back then. He never wore huge gear either. So, yeah, I don't know what that is. It doesn't, I mean, it's like if it's a glove, it's a brown piece of the glove, which maybe it was on the inside, but this looks like inside a, of the helmet. Well, I don't know because this looks like a tough piece of leather. Like it's, I just not, I'm not sure what it is. That's where I complained that I wish they would say on the back what it was. So that's the base. Then there's the whole diamond relic rookie gems that has four. And I think this is what most people are more familiar with. So you have the single gems, double gems, triple, and finally quad single will be your least desirable rookies. And the quad gems will be the biggest names. All base for single, double, triple, and quad are on a 99. So looking at like who got what treatment notable Mm -hmm. players on the double diamond checklist include Brock Faber. Is that disrespect, Roy? Brock Faber only a double time. I think a little bit. I think that's a little bit. Connor Zary, Dustin Wolf, Luke Evangelista, Matthew Coronado, Matt Savoy, Pavel Minchukov, and Zach Benson. So if you're watching on YouTube, here's the Pavel Minchukov. It's a purple parallel out of 25. Then triple gems rookies checklist has five players on it. It's Devin Levi, Matthew Nyes, Leo Carlson, Simon Nemec, and Yaroslav Askarov. And then four players this year got the quad diamond treatment. Fantilli, Bedard, Logan Cooley, and Luke Hughes. So Logan Cooley over Leo Carlson. Is that controversial? Hmm. Not how they played. Logan Cooley said it. He has. not talked about Logan Cooley enough. Yeah. He's had a good year. Yeah, he has. All diamond relic quickie gems have four parallels. There's ruby out of 49, purple out of 25, emerald out of 10. Here's Luke Hughes out of 10. Yep. And then Pure Black 101. Okay, now check this out. When you look at auto sets, there's 24 different <laughs> auto sets. 20. Hey, I, I'm the like one that complains. Say, like, I want autos. I want autos all the time. I'm the one. I'm the reason for this, I guess. Uh, okay, now maybe this is where we have the conversation. So I'm going to jump ahead a tiny bit. Spoiler alert. The box is 500 bucks. Yeah. All autos are sticker autos. That's what sucks. I mean, I'm, honestly, I love autos. I get $500. I get what's going on with that, but sticker autos just hurts. It hurts for that much. This isn't a complaint, but I was telling you, like, I opened up because I'm addicted to Parker's Champions. Mm-hmm. Another box. Here's like an auto I pulled yesterday of uh, who is it? Dylan Holloway. How are all Parker's Champions autos on card in a $120 box and a $500 Black Diamond are all stickers? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't that wild? Well, it's probably, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it's a I'm tiny not... thing, whatever it is, right? Yeah. But yeah, so, but there's, there's 24 different auto sets. So we're going to try to roll through some of the key ones. Here's Brock Faber. Here's our guy. Rookie Gems autos, 34 players on the checklist. Base are out of 25, 49, 99, or 199. So, like the out of 25 base rookies are the big guys. Bedard, Luke Hughes at one. Yuri Patera, whoever that is. 
There's also a red out of 10 and green out of 5 parallel. Then you have gemography cards, which have signatures alongside of jewels, kind of picking up the black, you know, the gems theme of Black Diamond. 19 players on the checklist. It's a mix of rookies, vets, and legends. The base of are out of 25. Then there's four parallels. Ruby out of 15, purple out of 10, emerald out of 5, and pure black 101. So, so this would be the Bedard base if you're watching. Yeah, I'm a... Uh... Boy, I'm having a. I got to look up something with this card. So it's okay. Never mind. I I was like, it looked really from the person in the background. This guy, I thought that was the guy in his young guns card with his mouth open, but it doesn't look like it. It looks different. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) This this is the same game. Yeah, yeah, it could have been. This is the dumb stuff I look at. It's like, but it's, I don't think it is. Then you have Diamond Stars, which includes autos from current NHL vets. Oops, kind of the sorry. more notable names. There's another gemography for the YouTube. Oh, people. yeah. I, yep, I missed that. That would be the Emerald sorry. or Ruby Parallel. This, yeah, the Ruby of McDavid. Okay, back to Diamond right. Stars. Diamond Stars, right. Cards are either out of 10 or 25, depending on the player. 25 players on the checklist, including Austin Matthews, Ovi McDavid, Makar, and Sidney Crosby. So here's Crosby. All these are out of 10. I, as far as like car designs, this is one of my favorites in this set. Mm-hmm. I think this yep, is a really very cool. sharp looking um, Sid card. It's also a premium relic plus auto set for Diamond Stars. So here's an example of Austin Matthews. 27 players on that checklist. All notable stars are either out of 10 or 25. And then lastly, there's a pure black 101 parallel as well. Oops, sorry. Yeah. Well, now the next one's the Diamond Legends autos. So these, are, of course, are all legendary players. Base are out of 10 or 25. 14 players on the checklist. Lindros, Henrik Lundqvist, Yari Curry, Martin Brodeur, Mario Lemieux, Mario Mario. Which one? Do you know which one it is? I've heard both. Oh, I've heard both, too. I always call it Mario. What do you prefer? Just... Yeah, me too. I call it Mario. It's our, it's our Nintendo heritage, right? <laughs> yep. Then there's Mike Mondano, Patrick Waugh, and Wayne Gretzky. We're looking here at the Lindros 101. Yeah, that is this the 101? Yeah. Okay. That that would be the Oh there, yes, sir. Yeah, pure black diamond autographs. No way that says Eric Lindros, but that's another story. That is weird. It's it's not even an E, it's like a an S or an E. I don't know. Somehow as if he was putting 88 somewhere and he forgot the other eight. I don't know. But I definitely want to get a Yari Curry in this car, in this set. The Legends. Well, not. Oh, I guess I can't get. I probably won't get the 101, but anything with Yari Curry, I think would look cool in here. Jewels of the Draft Ray are RPAs that have 27 players on the checklist. Base are out of 49 or 99. There's a pure black 101 again for this parallel too. Here's the Bedard. That's silly. <laughs> His smile. <laughs> it's the short print card, right? Or the short print picture. Here we're starting to see, though, those Blackhawk patches. That yep. Are just, just sick. There's another one, too. Like, if you look at Upper Deck's gallery that has. Here's the one I want. This is better one. When it's better, much better card with a player, like a plane shot, rather than. Kind of yeah. hard holding yeah. the puck up in Agree. His, his jersey. Okay, now we're moving on to kind of the part of the set I don't like, the manufacturer patches, but that's my personal preference. A lot of people do like the team logo jumbos. Base set of these cards includes vets and stars and some rookies too. They can just be a patch or some select rookies are autoed on a 99. I don't know, are you a fan of these or no? Nope. Again, five hundred dollar box. I just don't want yeah. a manufactured patch. But yep. that's just me. One of the more notable inserts from the past couple of years, Troy, is Band of Color. These are awesome. I love these. I love how they look. Mm-hmm. I always want to say Band of Colors. I always want to say Band of Brothers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's a TV show. Great series. <laughs> so there's uh, Vets and Legends that has twenty five players. Base art of twenty three. There's a pure black one on one parallel. Then there's rookies that have 15 players based out of 24. Includes Fantilli, Bedard, Devin Levi, Logan Cooley, Luke Hughes, and Yaroslav Askarov. 
There's also a pure black 101 parallel for both vets, legends, and rookies. So that's kind of like the main gist of the mm-hmm. black diamond. But of course, in black diamond, there's a lot of exquisite, a huge yep. exquisite collection checklist. I think it's worth kind of explaining again why we have these big exquisite sets or number of sets in, in a number of releases. Because so the NHL has mandated that the cup has to be the highest end or most exclusive hockey set produced each year. Yep. Now, Exquisite Collection predates the cup and has some of the most expensive cards of all time. So the LeBron James RPAs, a lot of like really rich basketball heritage there. And I think so really what that does is it relegates Exquisite not to be in its own set because if it was more expensive or more desirable than the cup, then that sort of violates that mandate yep. from the NHL and, and upper deck too, I'm assuming. So what we have then is exquisite gets broken up essentially into sets like ice, black diamond and the cup. Did I forget any, is there any other products that exquisite is in? I think it's just those three. If I That's the three I remember. Maybe I'm missing one, but maybe there's one or two others that we're missing. So there's 14 different exquisite sets in 2023, 24 black diamond. We're going to start off with a huge one right out of the gate. I'm assuming this will be a big hit. Yes. I don't love the design. I just don't love like the, like his head nope. popping off the top. Like, Oh, Hey, it's nope. me. <laughs> it's a, but it's a Connor. Connor Bedard extra exquisite rookies gold spectrum. 101 from the extra exquisite rookies checklist. There's nine rookies on the checklist. So it's an NHL shield patch. Bedard, Fantilli, Matthew Nyes, Luke Hughes, kind of the biggest names. Base is out of 349. So this is now where I'm going to have my checklist complaint or my parallel complaint. So the parallels, Troy, include gold out of 10, silver spectrum out of 10. Is that right? And gold 101. Why would you have two golds with different numbers? I don't know. But I don't I like almost... that. I don't like that there's two parallels out of the same number. Yeah. Again, it makes it like sometimes it's not super now if like what they did in like allure and parker's champions if they wrote the name of the card on the back who cares yep yep but when you're like on ebay or you're trying to figure out which what is this card it's not always super obvious as to what it is nope this bugs me so bugs you too (laughs) oh yeah this it really this i just name the just put the name of the card on the back save everyone the hassle You'd be doing a great thing for the hobby. You do it on some sets already. Just let's get it through everything. Now, if his young guns outburst red out of 25 is sold for as high as like almost 18 grand US, mm-hmm. is this a bigger card? I, I, I feel like this doesn't sell for as much. Is it I just me? I, it's, it, well, it's me too. I'm not the biggest exquisite guy. You're way more into exquisite than I am. I just think there's better. And it's not a game use. Shield either. Yeah. I would rather have a non rookie. Okay, here's a question for you. Would you rather have a rookie like player worn shield or a second or third year, but first game used shield? Probably oh man. I it depends on the player, but I I tend to want the game used. For your PC, not for value. Game use. Yeah, me too. All right. Moving along. There's exquisite rookie jumbo material set. This is a much nicer card. I would rather have not the one this card than the last 101. Mm-hmm. Only five rookies on the checklist. Bedard, Fantilli, Luke Hughes, Matthew Nyes, and Simon Edvinson. Bases out of 10. Parallels include gold out of five and gold spectrum 101. Very, this is a very nicely designed card. And again, because Exquisite is sticker autos, I actually like the fact this is an auto. Because yeah. the sticker, the auto would bug me. Yeah. Then there's Exquisite Materials, which is a VET memorabilia card. I think these look nice as well. Mm-hmm. A little bit like limited logo-ish now with that yeah. non auto version. Yeah. Base art is 25 and we're out of 49. There's a gold out of five parallel. And here again, another gold spectrum out of five parallel. Yeah, I don't like that either. Gold and gold spectrum both out of five. How the heck do you tell them apart? <laughs> or does the average person, you know, you got to think of too, the crappy... Like eBay picture. Yeah, the eBay pictures. 
And what are the odds that it's even listed right when you're going through the... Okay, so that those are kind of the highlights, Troy. There's a million sets. Yeah, I don't think we looked at half. You can go like to the Becca website if you want to see the full enchilada. But like we've been doing with all these 2023, 24 releases, want to just quickly break down the Bedard situation. A whopping, Troy, whopping 63 unique Connor Bedard cards on the set. Hmm. It was hard for me to get them all onto like one <laughs> slide. For the graphic. That's like the hardest part of this whole exercise. That took three of your four hours. Yeah, pretty much. That's a lot. 63 yeah. cards in one set. So you have base set rookies, rookie gems, rookie team logo, diamond relic quad, diamond relics tribute, exquisite rookies, exquisite 03 retro, exquisite 09 retro, extra exquisite, ex exquisite draft day, Exquisite jumbo materials, gemography, jewels of the draft, and band of color. And all the parallels in between. It's crazy. Okay. 2023 24 Black Diamond is a one pack box. Troy has six cards in the pack. Here's what you can expect in each box you get one autograph or diamond relic card, one base set, one base set parallel, one exquisite collection card. And three inserts, tech and or non-exquisite memorabilia cards. Right now, Black Diamond is pre-selling here in the U.S. at Damon Adams for a Yowza. Wow. Yowza, 500 yeah. U.S. dollars. So you're going to pay a mere $83.34 USD per card. Now, as a point of comparison, Troy, 2022-23 Black Diamond right now in Damon Adams is 200 bucks. Oh, really? Sorry, I skipped ahead. In Canada, 401 Games had it and it sold out for it was 450 Canadian. So 500 US versus 450 Canadian. Now it, which is 331 US. Makes sense it's sold out. I might consider buying a box at 330, but at $500, I think I'm out. And again, it, it's nothing I'm sure they'll sell like crazy. Nope. But if you don't hit a Connor Bedard. You almost have no chance. Yeah. I don't know. You're paying eight, you're gonna pay eighty three dollars a card and you're gonna like open cards and you're gonna have some cards that are like five bucks. This and then will the be, whole sticker thing. Yeah, this will be really interesting to see at the expo where these get priced at. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if they're if they're available or yeah. Oh, I kind of would have said the same thing about SP game use, but I think that's selling pretty well. I do, so. I think it is too. Well, well, for sure, the breakers bought a lot of it because they're just case after case after case. What do you think about Black Diamond overall? <sighs> there's some cards I really, really like, but there's some stuff I just question. And again, 500 bucks is probably out for me personally. I'm probably not buying it. However, if it's in that 300 range, which I'm guessing it won't be for US, maybe it's something I, I would buy a, buy a one box. But those definitely cards I like in this in this set that I will probably look for on the secondary market. So Black Diamond's five hundred. And have we seen pre sales for SP Authentic? Is that like that's yes. at least is that like seven hundred? It was. How do we hold on? Five seven hundred something like that. Stall real quick. <laughs> then that well, if that's the case, then that's got to put Premier and Ultimate. 800 or 1,000, right? So David Adams has 23, 23, 24 SP Authentic at 500. Okay. What would you rather spend 500 bucks on? If you got to choose either. Uh, probably SP Authentic. I get more cards. Get more cards. And if you and get an auto, auto, I get a guaranteed. Gonna, yeah. Yeah. On card. Auto as well. So you got to figure that Ultimate and Premier are going to be 7, big. 50 yep. in that range, right? crazy and then the cup three thousand dollars <laughs> i'm saying i'm gonna say two thousand for the cup it's gonna be a, it's gonna be big all right quick mention for gun show partner sponsor pwcc of course we're very thankful to them for their support of our show as well the april premiere auction toys live runs through april or thursday april 18th yep six hockey cards made in this month's premiere auction 
asing all significant cards, of course, and we're going to run through them really quick so everyone's up to speed and what your options are. A lot of McDavies. This yep. 20, 15, 16 Premier Connor McDavid Platinum Blue RPA 101. PSA Authentic. Uh, pretty big card, of course. 101 yes. Connor McDavid RPA. Love the patch, huh? This is a stupid patch. Yeah. That's really, really awesome. It's the oil drop, right? But it's upside yep. down. <laughs> oh, yeah. They put it upside down. That's crazy. <laughs> Had I, they... I didn't just realized that. <laughs> Another huge McDavid RPA 2015 16 exquisite collection out of 97. Yeah. PSA 10 auto authenticated. It's a cool looking card. Now, here's the thing, too. This is a PSA 10. The next one's a PSA 10 as well. S uh, 2015 16 SP Authentic FWAP. FWAP. Out of 100 PSA 10. You don't see PSA 10s on these thick memorabilia no. cards hardly ever. Nope. Uh, nice three color patch. Was it four breaks in it? Beautiful auto. I don't know why they just had the auto authenticated. I probably would have graded that auto. Uh, I'm guessing there's a streak like where the pen came up. Then there's one more McDavid RPA 2015 16, the cup 0506 tribute RPA out of 10, another PSA 10. So there's. Mm-hmm. Three PSA 10 McDavid RPAs. All right. So, Troy, PSA, let's say they give you a call and they say, Troy, you're such a good goalie coach. <laughs> goalie coaches aren't thanked enough. We want to do something to reward you. Here's four McDavid RPAs. We're going to give you one just on whatever card you would love to have yeah. in your collection the most. This Which one. one are you picking? Me too. That, that's the authentic one. It's a really cool looking card. Yeah. I just think it looks awesome. Now it's even so good that you picked your horizontal card. Or your I did. Uh, <laughs> vertical I'd probably, I'd probably... I, to be honest, I'd probably crack it too, because <laughs> I just want to display. Or this would be in my. This wouldn't be going anywhere. Okay, but it, it's not just a McDavid auction in the premiere. There's two other cards, a nice Austin Matthews RPA to ninety nine from the Cup, barely two color, barely, barely it's two there. color, it's yeah. there, technically two color. <laughs> Right. Uh, this is a BGS 910. And then the only non RPA in this month's premiere, huge card nonetheless. Huge card. 1985 OPG Mario Lemieux, PSA 10, pop 48. Wow. Gem rate of 0.8%. 0.8% gem rate. So see what the bid. So that's out 3,400. The tribute's the big one. Oh, Which no. one do you think sells for the most? Well, this one's got, this one's going for the most right now. Is the it? exquisite, uh, 20,500. Okay. Well, if you don't have premier auction type bankroll like Troy does, then yeah. maybe you're more like me, who loves the PWCC weekly. I've been getting some great cards in the PWCC lately. Mm-hmm. I was just showing you the other day my right here, my Corilla Thrill employee, employee exclusive PMG purple PMG. Uh, shipping's like really fast now. Like they really yeah. up their game shipping. Like I paid for this card. I want to say like two three days later, it was sitting there in the mailbox for i've actually never shipped anything from them i always vault it yeah i got a lot of cards in the vault there too Mm -hmm. the current pwcc weekly is of course live too right now so be sure to check it out at pwccmarketplace.com get your bids in early mark your favorites and then of course on thursday's show troy and i will pick out our favorites from both vintage and modern all right troy another big mailbag today lots of questions Mm -hmm. you uh you put a lot of work in the answers here so i'm kind of excited to See what you have to say. First question is a two-parter from our good buddy, 86 Collectibles. As a class of 2005, mainly Crosby and Ovi, careers wind down. It doesn't look like it lately. You see that Ovi <laughs> almost, might have 30 goals. He's like 20, 29 goals now. Who's that? Ovechkin. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's like miraculous yeah. based on where he was a couple months ago. Okay, so as their careers wind down, sort of, and they move on from flagship to SV Legends. That's kind of a fun way to put it. Where do you mm-hmm. see their hockey market going? Up, down, flat. And then part two, as they retire and sign more and more autos, as many do, where do you see their autograph market going? You go ahead, Troy. Well, I'll just say, just the overall market, I, I, it's not going down, I don't think. I think it either is flat or just keeps going up steadily. 
as they become legends of the game and make Hall of Fames and all that fun stuff. For the autos, this one was really intriguing to me because I don't see Ovi and Crosby as being guys that are going to sign autographs at card shows and take that route. They seem to me like, especially Crosby seems way more reserved and that's not his style. Now, I don't know if they've, if either of them have done private signings, we see those pop up every once in a while for other players. I don't know if those two, I just don't, those two don't seem like to me that they need that, that they're going to do that route. I think they'll either go into coaching or Ovi will just go back to Russia and live his life. <laughs> and, but maybe I'll stay in the U S raise his kids. I don't know, but I just, the whole autograph market, I could see going like prices increasing if they don't sign like yeah. a lot of players do and they become harder and harder to find. I'm assuming they don't need the money either. Yeah, I don't think so. I think Crosby why does, is the one. Why does Gretzky still sign his name 12,000 times a year think, on hockey card? Well, I think he gets a lot of money from Upper Deck. I've always wondered. I don't know. I don't want to uh, There's no way there's in my just, mind Gretzky does it for the money. I think he does. Well, he's it got because... business stuff too. A lot of business interest, I think. That Who knows? I mean, the, you know, each to their own. I just don't see Crosby or Ovechkin being that guy that wants to keep signing autographs. And they're I totally agree with you. Yeah. And that, that I think that's a good thing, for the hobby. Mm -hmm. I wish Wayne Gre I understand Upper Deck's position they're in, that they have to almost put Wayne Gretzky autos in every set. Well, it's they a golden goose, goose, right? But I'm so confused by there's so many Wayne Gretzky auto cards that. It's like, how, how do you know which ones are special versus one of the 12? I mean, you can make the argument, of course, they're all special, but hmm. really the truly special ones, you know, like. That, I think that's why I don't have one. I just don't well, understand which one I would get. Do you remember when I started going down the route and I, I've, I'm halfway through it where I I looked, I TC database, I pulled. Oh, and yeah. I, so I got through 2014 15 upper deck artifacts and i looked at all the parallels and all the gretzky autos and right now through that i'm at 21,511 autographs autograph cards that gretzky's signed like total or different cards? total like total it includes all the parallels of a card and everything so now i'm through 2014 15 i got a lot more to go and i let's Double it, triple it, maybe, and we're gonna yeah, be forty thousand. <laughs> I mean, it's gonna be a huge number. So, okay, next one, Instagram, Spurs saying North something North, Spurs saying North, yeah, Spurs saying. What do you think will happen with Ovechkin rookie cards, Young Guns, Future Watch, etc.? If when he breaks Gretzky's goals record, I think it's all baked in. There might be a slight bump, but I think a lot of it's baked in that he's gonna do it. Maybe 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 it took a little hit this year, but man, if 30 is 30 is good, I think. What's he gotta get next year then? 40? Or I can't remember what the exact number There's is. There's no way he doesn't get the record now. I think I think he's on I think he's gonna figure it out. They'll figure it out. He'll like Karn said it the best, right? It's it's how he does it at yeah. this point. With Grace and fanfare or does he just like basically limp <laughs> empty net or empty net, like every time there's an empty net, they throw him out there for Okay, next one, Discord Braun. In a past episode, I asked the question, what purpose does the monthly Beckett Hockey Magazine serve anymore these days? Josh, you advise next time you're at your LCS, you would make a point of picking a copy up to flip through and review. Just wanted to follow up and inquire if you've had a chance to do that. Okay, Troy. I went to the LCS yesterday, <laughs> partly because of this. <laughs> I, I, of course, forgot. So sorry, Braun, about that. I did get the Beckett pulling it out of the bag here. Right here, it got Troy's uh, guy, yep. lost a mustache. Nice on the front. I have another trivia question for you. Okay, how much do you think this was? I'm gonna guess fifteen. It's fourteen dollars. I, I the only reason I know that's because I still, when I go to like Barnes and Noble and so I still look at video game magazines all the time, and I've seen just the price increases. I mean, I remember when a magazine was three ninety nine for Electronic Gaming Monthly or four ninety nine, like Game Pro, and now I, I just know they're triple that. I think it's just it's a tough medium. Yeah. So this is the what month is this? It doesn't say on it. Well, oh, April twenty twenty four. Did you get a chance to peruse said magazine? I mean, I kind of did. Well, first of all, fourteen dollars. I like. 
I ap- I have to apologize to you because I don't know if we can have a company Christmas party. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, that, that's just that's just insane. And the so it's mainly a price guide, right? We'll get into that in a second. There's a couple art. The big feature article is one on Austin Matthews, and then there's another one on the case that sold like that's like been old news for two and a half months or two months. That's now. the thing. It's just it's such of the, the Gretzky case that sold at Heritage. Yeah. The world we live in, it's instant news. You can't like mag- that's why magazines struggle. You you gotta if that magazine was gonna be successful or in, keep increasing, it would have to do more features. And it's like gotta be stuff that I can't find everywhere else. Like the price guide stuff, I think is worthless. I know there's some there's some people that probably still subscribe to it and still use it. We've seen it at the expo. Well, it's only raw cards. Yeah, I just fine, but but I what's their methodology though? It's so weird. It's like yeah. How are they determining the? Are they just going to eBay and like comping? <laughs> Probably. And then using old comps or. Yeah, I don't know. So you're saying not much, not much, not worth $15. No. Well, and actually, too, it's like, so it's funny. The, the When I noticed that these were at the card shop, I was talking to the one of the owners or managers, oh, whoever yeah, it was. You're smart. Did you ask him how many sells? No, you know how oh. I, I caught my attention was he had a huge stack of them and he was ripping off the cover and sending the covers back. So what they do is the ones that don't sell in the month, they literally take the cover and they rip it off and then they send it back to Beckett and they get a credit for it. Wow. The ones that don't sell. Guess that's only that's probably the only way that Beckett could sell those. I things. think that's fairly common, like in the print. Yeah, I have no yeah, I I see no value in it. I'm sorry if that offends anyone. Yep. I just literally does nothing for me and for 14 dollars, it's i'll never buy one again (laughs) (laughs) sorry but but you know what though the one thing that it did is it did bring me to that kind of that flashback moment as a kid where there's nothing more exciting than the new beckett to see oh yeah yeah i used to that's all we had yeah i used to run to the drugstore and they had beckett baseball beckett hockey beckett everything and then going to the library, my God, I must have checked out the the thick. Do you remember those little? They were really thick, but they were little, little-ish price guides. I baseball yeah. cards. I, I would go through those things. I mean, we have when I picked up my cards from my parents' house, we had, I mean, me and my dad once just sat there with those guides, went through everything, and we put post-it notes on every page of our of uh the card binder. Yeah, the binder with the price. And it was hilarious because I opened it up and, you know, five cents, <laughs> 10 mm-hmm. cents. That gave you something to do. Projects like that were fun, though. Oh, yeah. I used to love stuff like that. All right, Discord Blade Visionary. So following up on the last show, Josh made a comment on cards that are exclusive and one-on-one, but just nasty in appearance. Question I have for both of you is, what is one revered kind of grail-type respected hockey card by the hobby, which you personally think is cringeworthy in appearance? Or to put it more mild, they're basically not your cup of tea. I'll, yeah, go, first. Uh, I'll go first. I didn't, I forgot to get pictures of them, but most people will know these. So I, I <laughs> probably get ostracized from the hockey hobby, Josh. So it's been nice to know you. I guess I'm out, but I've just never been a big fan of the Gretzky rookie picture. I always <gasps> thought it's just, it looks like he's leaning kind of like Michael Jackson dancing, just kind of <laughs> weird lean. Yes, it's iconic. Yes, I want to own one. Don't get me wrong, but I've just never been a fan of the picture. Um, you mentioned it already, the 2015 Upper Deck Cup, Connor McDavid RPA, it always drives me nuts with the autograph being on top of words or letters that say autograph, blah, blah. I just, I hate it. it. It's busy and I don't like it one bit. And then my boy, Mike Bossy, I've always thought his rookie picture was odd. It's kind of like he's stumbling or just, it just looks weird. There's another player in it. It's been, it's one of those two that those three off the top of my head, I always, just like yeah, I don't. I'm I'm not the biggest fan of how they look, but I still want them. I can't say I disagree with you. But uh, speaking of getting kicked out of the hobby, Troy, I'm gonna say I don't love the designs of the 2005 06 the Cup RPAs. So that's like here. Is that the McDavid Cros- 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 one? Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like the McDavid tri- here, like this. I've never yeah. liked this. Now, maybe we should just end the show now and shut down our <laughs> social media accounts because 
everybody hates us. But I've always liked what I do like about this card is I always liked how this really does look like a metal plate or something. People, people love this card. Like, yeah, the, I like how it looks like this metal thing, but I, I can see where you're like, like hey. guys, like they go Google Gaga. They love yeah. these cards. The Mitch Grotman's Mitch Grotman now hates me. <laughs> swearing at but me it is immediate. Yeah, it is nice because the rule of thirds, right? It's got the three separate chunks for each thing. Mm. Yeah. I just don't like it. Yeah. Sorry. Hey, teach their own. I would get one and sell it. <laughs> Buy a glow PG. There you go. Or a highlighter. Stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> Bully. Instagram. It's freaking Polly. As the president of the GPPC, <laughs> the German Player PC Consortium. We would like to know your thoughts on our volunteer as a tribute, John Jason Paterka, who's coming up on a three thirty goal season. Looks poised to take over as a Sabres hobby superstar with Tage taking a step back and Cousins not making a ton of progress. What are your thoughts on the hobby prospects of young JJP? Go ahead, Troy. I just, I just know you love JJP. You love screaming his name. You love everything about him. I haven't watched him for more than five seconds this year. So I could go off of the stat line, and that's interesting. I had no clue he was close to 30 goals. But anything that gets guy. Josh to scream JJP more, we got we to gotta go for it. JJP! <laughs> there it is. That's really all I know about him. That's all I know about him. <laughs> Next. <laughs> no, you know, uh, what was that show that I actually kind of liked? It was a very 80s show where the kid in the 80s that was on a few years ago. Well, it's a current show, but it was yeah, it was kind of a current show. It was about kind of like a, a wonder, not the wonder, but a kid growing up in the was it the, the 80s. reboot? Was it the reboot Wonder Years? No, 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 no. And he had like the mom who was like the blonde mom, and then the dad who was the the, the Jeff Garland guy from Kirby Enthusiasm was the dad. Oh, uh, the Goldbergs. The Goldbergs, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, his brother was like JJT or something. Like that. I don't know. <laughs> Right. Uh, yeah. So he is having a nice season. Like you said, going up the stat line. We'll see what happens next year. He's on a dumpster fire of a team. Yeah. And all I got to say is somebody's got to separate themselves from, from like the hobby. Yeah. On that team. So who knows? Maybe it'll be the young JJP. <laughs> Love it. The more I get to say that, the better. I think between that and flop, flop, and have news, those are my favorite things to say. <laughs> Instagram, MN Card Collector. Could you discuss some of the most underrated players in the hobby that statistically should get more appreciation? Possible how Mark and other factors have kept them in the shadows of the hobby. A few I can think of are Carter Verhage, Nico Hishier, and Rope Hintz. There's a ton of guys. Kucherov, I know you have a new Kucherov's my, my guy answer to this every time. I should have. I saw this question. Now I'm kicking myself. I should have went back because we... We're not going to go into every player and talk about them because we've done that on previous shows a lot. I should have went and found some episode numbers to give you where we actually have segments on what do we call them under? We don't we don't we don't like to say under under appreciated. Yeah, yeah, we we have actual segments in past shows on that. So maybe I'll look and try to find some episode numbers for you. But it's obvious that statistics alone don't equate to hobby chase mm -hmm. so I, I try to list like what are the what are the factors that if you break down like what makes a player very desirable in the hobby here's here's my list right i came up with hype personality marketability pedigree production which is statistics right yeah. the market they play in the style which i think is becoming more and more important yeah is there something exciting about their game and are they being promoted? Which maybe we haven't talked about enough, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you look at like Bedard, and to the average fan, statistically, his season isn't that. Um, uh, JJP has had a better season statistically, probably than Connor Bedard, right? Now, I'm not saying he's a better player. I'm not saying Bedard isn't great, but there's nothing pure statistic wise that makes. It's not the Team Mussolini 76 goal season. And Bedard has all the skills, the talent, the pedigree. He's got a good personality. But getting back to my point here, Troy, he the league has marketed the snot out of this guy. Upper Deck has marketed the crap out oh, of Josh. Connor Bedard. Josh, when, when's funny. your apology to Connor Bedard? Well, JJP's got more goals. <laughs> okay. 
<laughs> I'm just, I'm heading off the the emails you're about to get. I know. I I, it, <laughs> I I realize that. I know that. Bedard As you said it, points. you're like, oh, I'll just I'll get to it. Bedard has more points, but JJP has more. Points. There you go. Correct. You get my point, though. Let's not I get do. lost in the sauce here. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so I, I think it's like that style and marketability and how much they're being – and is somebody pushing this player mm-hmm. are huge factors that, that go into it. And then we said this a lot before, too, is that there's other factors like with the rare exception of like Dreisaitl and maybe like Mitch Marner and – there's typically one hobby star per team. So yep. we got these guys like Minnesota car collector. You mentioned like Carter Verhage, Nico Hishi or Robey Hans. Well, Carter Verhage gets lost in the sauce with Matthew Kachuk and Nico Hishi with the Hughes brothers, right? He's not going to over, he's not going to elevate above them. And then Robey Hans has J Rob. Mika Rantanen has to get past McKinnon and McCarr. What do you think, Troy? Agree. I I'm just mad at myself for not writing down episode numbers right now. <laughs> it's it's like we've talked about this so many times before that I feel bad that I should I didn't. Well, I think to some degree there is no answer to this either. Yeah. I can't explain to you why Nikita Kucherov has no hobby love. I, I don't <laughs> I can't explain that one blows my mind every time. Yeah, there's no yeah, you can say that his Russian. Market, I guess he's Russian there. Russian <laughs> Instagram, 100, JB Hockey. 136 points. That's all I'm going to say right now. Nobody 136 cares. points. <laughs> the guy gets no love. Instagram, JB Hockey Cards. I've officially decided I will pay no more than $300 for Connor Bedard Young Guns. Stay strong. At that price, is it worth it? Or do you think it'll drop further than that during the off season? Uh, I think at 300 whatever. Here's the thing. If you want to buy a Bedard Young Guns, I would, my best advice is to buy it with a collector's mindset where yeah. I just want the card. I want to get it at a price I'm comfortable at. And whatever happens, happens. If it goes down to 240 okay. Right. I, I think eventually around 300 you'd probably be okay. But it's ultimately, it's going to depend on what his career progresses to. Mm-hmm. It's just such a... And I know it's a little bit controversial and people have pushed back and I appreciate that on us. And, and I understand the perspective and when people say that pop count and stuff won't end up mattering on this card. I just don't know if I completely buy into that. I think that this card is and rightfully so printed a lot. And there's yeah, going to be a I, lot of them out there. Yep. And I, I, there's so going to be so many other better Connor Bedard investment opportunities um, but but I want one too. It doesn't mean I don't. I, I'm just gonna wait and get it and buy it at a price that I don't really care, you know, that price I'm comfortable at, and not really worried about how much it goes up or down after that point. What do you think? No, I agree. I'm just I the collector mindset I love. Plus the whole printed to the moon thing. The, the, these, these boxes are gonna be around forever. I feel like I feel like they printed so much of this that as that pop count goes to infinity. I think that's going to put some pressure on it. I think the next one's kind of related from our good friend, Jay top shelf cookie sniper 88. Make sure you listen to his podcast. Uh, He's contributing hockey card content as well. And does a great job with this show. After listening to the great last episode where you guys discussed Bedard and young and value decline. Do you feel that the once a card starts averaging less than $300? I'm assuming raw. This will usher in a hobby box, lower price. He says, Troy, insert button bar. <laughs> now the fans are getting on me about the button bar. Yeah. Boop. There you go. I think, Troy, that the biggest factor probably on the box price is the bounty. Mm. And I don't think it's going to, I think it'll go down 20 bucks. Is like that, that a hobby mystery again? Are we still sure that bounty is available? <laughs> we we couldn't know, find we any mentions of it anymore. That? I don't know. Yeah, maybe we should. Yeah, I, don't, I think it's supply and demand. I don't know how much of it's sold already. If, if people are willing, are going to just keep the price as it is and not, they've already made their money and weighed it out if retailers are willing to do that. But but I do think, though, too, that because there is no map pricing, the pricing isn't mm-hmm. dictated or controlled by Upper Deck, that as time goes on, we're going to see probably a decent amount of variability. So you just have to shop for the right deal. What do you think about this question? 
I kind of found a uh, figure. I should have if, asked a card shop what uh, kind of their opinion and what if they've had rebuy opportunities yet. I'm curious about that. I think it's been tough. So I was at a card shop yesterday and they got 38 cases originally and they have six. Okay. Wow. So, so they're not going to lower their price at this point. Nope. It's like they've already made their money and they're just going to, and they're going to stash one case, I think they said. Okay. Now that's a sample of one. So yeah. take that for what it is. All right. God, we got a bunch of kind of related questions, but they're all good ones. They're all kind of brain twisters here. Instagram, Al698S. Why are Marcel Dion cards so underpriced? So that we could have put this in the underappreciated category. Yeah. To me, Troy, the easy answer is he didn't win any cups. But I just don't think that that's the whole thing, if that explains it all. And to some degree, I think every sport has guys like this where the numbers yeah. are insane. But for some reason, and maybe I should have made this point a minute or two ago, too, is that is there something to this maybe unquantifiable sort of connection with fans? Right, that for some guys, fans just love. And I'm not saying that Marcel Dion wasn't loved, but there doesn't seem to be that connection to Steve Eiserman. Or the, like there was a Steve Eiserman as there it was Dion, right? Yeah, which is weird though, because I guess who's got his own booth at the expo every year? Marcel Dion. He'll talk time. to anyone. Talk to anyone. He don't care. He'll, and he'll talk to you forever. Like you like you're his best friend. He's really personable. How how do you explain it then? I don't. I I always wondered being in L.A. during those years when L.A. wasn't the hot spot for They're hockey awful. until yeah until Gretzky got there. Maybe just kind of people forgot about him. He never had. I'm looking up his stat lines because I had to remember this before I said it. He never had more than 60 goals. In, he he had 59. Looks like it was career high. So he never. I mean, never. I don't know. Maybe something to do with that. He never had the 80 goal season or a 70 goal season, but. I think a lot. I mean, he was with Detroit early in his career, so I mean, that's a good hockey market. Yeah, last season with Detroit, he had 121 points. So yeah, I don't know what the deal is with Dion. Yeah. All right, Twitter, Sebastian Englehart. Great question that I hadn't even thought of, and it's a little bit mind blowing to me, to be honest. He said the Blackhawks, and I haven't verified this, but I'm assuming it's true. The Blackhawks have a better chance to get the number one overall pick this year than they did last year. Do you think Macklin Celebrini to the Blackhawks would be good or bad for the hobby? Well, didn't Ed, didn't Edmonton have a run of number one picks, or am I just misremembering that? So Edmonton, yeah, three years in a row, 2010, 2011, and 2012. Now they blew those on Taylor Hall, Nugent Hopkins, and Neil Yakupov, who's – but, yeah, I, I don't – personally, I don't want them to get the number one. It would be nice for someone else to get Macklin Celebrini or whoever they want to take. but. If that's the way the odds play out, it won't surprise me. So with our wild not making the playoffs, we get a shot at the number one pick, right? <laughs> we do, but I think we'll get like one ping pong ball or whatever. Or whatever. It was the num- what was it? how they do it again? There was like the numbers and stuff. Like yeah, the no. last digit was really our good. odds would go down or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So the Oilers, and then man, they had then they had two years where they weren't the number one, and then they got McDavid. So they eventually got the hobby star. All right, we're going to go through a little exercise here really quick. I'm going to roll through like the worst of the worst teams. And assuming Macklin Celebrini is the the number one pick, who would you like to see him go most to most from the hobby? All right, hold on. I got to find and out where's, have... he, where's he from. He's, he's Canadian. Canada. Okay, he's from BC. Plays at Boston. All right. Boston College? Nope, Boston. <laughs> Hey, he's a terrier. I know. I know. <laughs> All right. Ottawa. Montreal. Columbus. Or San Jose, Chicago, Anaheim, Arizona. Those are kind of the, like, we'll call those the seven worst teams. Man, I'd probably want them in Montreal. You think so? With Slavkovsky and. Sure. Why not? I don't want him to die off in Arizona. I'll tell you that much. Arizona's exciting, though, man. They got Matias Michelli, Clayton Keller, Logan Cooley, Josh Bone. For, for all 5,000 people that want to watch. <laughs> yeah. Calgary and Seattle have been eliminated, too. 
I, I wouldn't want to go to San Jose because I just think that that's where or Anaheim. Anaheim has got to prove it to me that they can make good with young talent. Okay. I would, say, we, I would are, say are we talking ourselves into Chicago? <laughs> we want them in Chicago. We're talking now. ourselves into Chicago. <laughs> no, Montreal's not bad. I would say, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I hope he's good and he goes somewhere where he can yeah. lift up that mark. Facebook, Thaddeus Stewart. I missed hitting a Bedard Young Guns in my two pre-order hobby boxes. Do I now have to quit the hobby and roam forever in hockey card obscurity? <laughs> you can join. You can invite me and Josh in our, since we've been ostracized after saying we didn't like some of the biggest cards <laughs> in the hobby, you can come join well, We're us. both currently bedard list, right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Young Guns. Um, I think there's a lot more people that don't have them than do with that. Yeah, so you're good. Ready. You're all good. Discord KMM. Come. What's the etiquette? Oh, that's a great question. That's fantastic. And you did some yeoman's work on this, Troy. Oh, geez. what's the etiquette around making offers for cards at shows and or on platforms like eBay or my card post? Dealers can say I typically offer only 60 or 70 percent, and that's accepted as gospel. But does the same go for the casual collector? I don't want to lowball people. And I want to be fair, but I also want to get the right deals. Yeah, I, I agree. It's a great question. And it's it's one thing that's kind of stuck with me when getting back into the hobby, listening to a lot of people talk, listening to a lot of different shows. The one thing kind of was a main theme on this kind of whole negotiations or getting a good deal is when you go to a show, we'll say that's where we're going. I know you say my card post, but I'm going to say you go to a show, have two or three cards in your head that you know dead on how much they're worth. And they're pretty widely available and you're more than likely to find them at a table and then see what a dealer has those cards for. And you can tell pretty quick if they're in the ballpark or if they're way overpriced and you probably have no chance of negotiating like 40% off or something like that. Or if they're close, then you might be able to see that, Hey, maybe this guy will work on some stuff or negotiate on other cards. And again, though, I just, I had to do this. You have to get over the fear of acting like you're going to lowball them or get, just get over that fear. The worst they can say is no. Yeah. They might get mad and give you some grief, but Hey, at the end of the day, if you think it's a fair price, just make an offer and see what they say. Like, again, they can say no. And then now, you know, but it's one of those things that's really hard to get over it for some people like me. I was terrified going yeah. to card shows and talking to people and trying to get deals on stuff. I wasn't very good at it. Now I have no problem doing it. That's an awesome answer. I think I'm trying to think like, what, what would I add? Maybe like stating your opinion on the value of a card. Or stating your hit, your, your, uh, like why you think it's worth this much. Like having some, I don't know what sort I'm looking for. Some evidence. Is that the right word? Like, yeah, yeah, like do your research, like be prepared. Yeah. I also think though, too, like so if somebody has a card that you're interested in making an offer to buy or trade, maybe this is more applicable to trading. Mm-hmm. Letting them know and say, hey, this card interests me. Here's where I kind of value it at. From a boy, mm-hmm. you know, if do you am I in the same ballpark you're in? And then going deeper into the deal at that point. And yeah. So you're not wasting one's time. Discord Ojibwe86 with Beckett as a monthly price guide. Wow, two Beckett questions. <laughs> Losing popularity over the years. Do you see the possibility of a company like Terapeak and eBay coming out with a monthly or quarterly price guide magazine in different sports? Seems like for a while now, the confirmed sales from Terapeak is widely accepted and respected through the hobby. Yep. What do you think, Troy? So, in today's environment of almost instant access to data, to sales data, I think a monthly or quarterly price guide makes absolutely no sense at all. Um, probably from a financial standpoint, as the data would be out, outdated almost immediately. And now you think about Terapeak being owned by eBay. Would they ever do this? No, I don't think they will. I don't think they have any interest in helping provide useful content to the to, to, to the card hobby. They have Teradata. They have, that's like one of their reporting tools. If you need it, it's there. You can find it. I don't think they have any interest in putting more money into like creating reports now, one thing you could do, there are other services, right? Like Market Movers, Card Ladder. They kind of do this a little bit in some of their daily recaps they put out. So there is that kind of realm too, or, or you do it yourself. But 
I just, I, no, I don't see Tara Peak or eBay doing it at all. I agree. All right, next question, Discord. California Dave, with the Wild, most likely <laughs> not making the playoffs this year. Thanks, Dave. Thanks <laughs> How's some what, teams you, <laughs> what teams do you see yourself rooting for? Who are you rooting for, Troy? Vancouver, because I love the turnaround story, and I love Rick Tockett just coming in there and turning things around. And then if they make it, I would actually be a, be a Pittsburgh Bobo. Wow. God, you are falling in love with Sid. Yep, now, you you've been going off for months now. I would say a year about Toronto being your Canadian sports team. I know. And it's funny. I don't see Toronto on your <laughs> list. Here. So what happened? Everyone, I just, I, I, people hate Toronto fans so much, it seems like. It's like, I'm just going to stay out of that. You need to be loved. Is gonna... I'm secretly rooting for him, I guess. But right. man, you bring up Toronto and oh, it gets crazy. So I'm going to root for Edmonton because I want to see my guy Dreisaitl get a cup and then it'd be good for the hobby for Connie McDavy yeah. to get one. And then I love watching Florida play. I'm a big Matthew Kachuk guy. Mm-hmm. I love his uh, the kind of uh, heel sort of personality yeah. he has. I think it's much needed. Instagram, Card Professor 7 besides sharing the top 10 total sales of hockey players, can this be broken down to which sets of cards for each player are selling the best. The data professor, of course, is available through the APIs. Like that's what market movers and card ladder and such yeah. use, but there's no tool that currently allows you to pull. And you'd be way better at because this is kind of what you do for a career. There's no like power BI tool for all the sales data that allows you to slice it and dice it however you want. And so someone would have to make that tool. The problem with that would be that there's only a tiny amount of people like us <laughs> would ever be interested in yeah. it. So uh, it's not really commercially viable to spend the time to make a tool like that. I don't think, but if there plus, was one, we would use it 4,000 hours. Of yeah. And plus eBay just has, I know they try to put like the set name, but you can free form it. They don't, this is where I've always said you should be forced to pick from a list, yeah. but who knows if you would have every one of them. If they could do that, then you start getting a little bit better on the sets. But when you have anything that can be freeformed, I don't even want to try. I mean, you could and just think you'd have to be doing text search. It would just be insane. The, well, I'll, I'll give you an example. Yeah, based on just using text in a title field, is that upper deck clear cut the set and oh, upper yeah. deck clear cut the, the card? card. Yeah, you have no way of, of separating those. Yep. All kind of geeky hockey card sales data stuff that most people probably don't realize. Last question. Discord, our good buddy Beer Boz out of our Gong Show Discord. He says, I have a mailbag, Gong Show, CSI, <laughs> Scooby-Doo, Colombo. Love that. Matlock, mystery question. Oh, where's Murder, She Wrote? I was hoping for a Murder, She Wrote. Oh, there it is. It'd be a question for you, D, but he said, what's up with the Barkov autos from 2022-23 Allure? They look like nothing like literally every other mm. auto of his. So I just put a, he s sent us a bunch of examples in discord, but here's the auto in question. And then he, and then he sent us the next picture toy is his regular auto, which yeah. mm. maybe at a friend sign. Oh, maybe he decided to change friend, it up. Girlfriend, mom, <laughs> auntie, or it's like <laughs> Anton Lindell or something like that, that they, yeah, I don't they know the switched. answer. I would look up other, maybe Panthers autos and try to figure that out. Or he had someone else, but I don't. And again, he sent a bunch of examples. Yeah. Like of this, and you're saying they all look like this one that I have on YouTube like that right one, now with and the exception. Then, and then there's 2022, 20, the 23 allure where they're all, yeah. and maybe it just changes auto. Like you look like, I remember looking at like on the basketball side, a guy like LeBron completely has changed his auto like three times. So I don't know if this is the new Barkov what Stutzla? auto. Stutzla is our great example of changing your own. Yeah. Um, I wonder, too, did he send any 23, 24? No. Have there been any autos yet of Barkov? No, he just said that. Yeah, that, okay. that'd, be a good... that'd be a good reference point, too, if there's any out there. Well, if somebody can help Beer Boss out, please chime yeah. in. A message us on social media, comment on the YouTube video. Uh, yeah. All right. Personal pickups. 
you still a uh, hockey war chest loser? War chested. Getting ready for the expo. I did have one pickup. 1997 Pinnacle Dominic Hoshik Mirror Blue. Got it on the Slab Sharks uh, weekly auction list. Nice. Yeah. Very, very happy. Love 90s cards. Uh, cool card. It's got the old Cooper helmet with the yep. dopey face mask. I, I just think it's a great card. Very cool. Troy approved purchase. Troy approved. There we go. All right. That's our show. If you like the episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple, Spotify, whatever podcast app you listen to us on. If you love the show, you want to support us, want to chat with us on the Discord, the Hockey Cards Gong Show Discord server, please consider a $5 a month donation. Join our $199 support level here on Patreon. Be one of the first 199 supporters ever of our show. The link is in the show description within our Instagram profile, on our TikTok and uh, profile as well. You can go to our website, hockeycardsgongshow.com, click on the Become a Patron link, or go to the Patreon website, patreon.com, and search for Hockey Cards Gong Show. We're on social media. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, Twitter, and YouTube. And Troy, the Hockey Cards Gong Show podcast is a production of Dollar Box Ventures LLC. Have an awesome start to your week. We'll be previewing the expo on Thursday show. Talk to you then.